All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Chesapeake, Virginia. We are bringing you some Tier 1 doubles coverage here at Beast of the East 2022 tournament presented to you by Fire Cornhole. We are here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court bringing you all the coverage here. And we are underway with this match. It's already in progress. Score is... 4-2 to two in favor of Sean McConnell and Ryan Mitchell. Actually, 5-2 to two now over Cameron Belvin and Jason McCannon. A strong finish there from Jason, but that's not enough. Ten to two now, McConnell and Mitchell. We welcome you back. There were ninety eight teams in doubles rounders this morning. Well, I guess this morning and early afternoon, it took a little while to get through all six rounds. We now have 49 teams in tier one, 49 teams in tier two. We'll be bringing you the tier one coverage here. First round action. Now 13 to two. McConnell and Mitchell. We saw Belvin and McCannon on this court earlier. They took the W in rounders on this court. Looking pretty good in the process, I might say, too. through real quick trying to get an idea of the seating of these two teams all right this should be a pretty evenly matched pairing according to the rounders play Cameron Belvin Jason McCannon come in as the 31 seed Sean McConnell Ryan Mitchell come in as the 34 seed Pretty evenly matched, but the 34 seed with the early lead right now, 13 to six. Good airmail to finish the round out, but nevertheless, it's gonna be seven now, 13 to seven as Cameron picks up one more. Jason goes short blocker there. Then airmail. See if he can do it again. Hope he goes. It wasn't an airmail, but it went in the hole. Same result. Oh, that was a nice, nice bag. Caught the lip of the hole and snuck it in. All right, Jason can't get bag four to go, but he's still going to get two points out of that frame. It started out really great for him with the blocker airmail.
Cameron already with one bag in the hole, content to just stay behind, play it safe. Waits to bag number four to drain an airmail. Oh, and that's going to be a big number. Again, they were slight favorites coming in. At least according to the, the rounder seating. And Allison is back. Just got the bracket, posted it in the comments so Great. everyone can keep up. Time air mail there. Jason's hit a few of those. It's Showing off here at this tournament today. He has impressed me. Have you looked at the bracket at all? Uh, not necessarily. I Just scrolled through to see what seeding this match was. like we're going to play bag stack in this round. Both players three bags deep. Oh, and just as I say that, fourth bag blocker by Cameron. Oh, nice airmail for two. They're on the move. Unfortunate. Cameron telling him to uh, throw it just barely over the top of the the black bag there, and hopefully get the push. Right idea. Execution wasn't quite there. Jason still nabs a couple points, 17, 15. I'm not real familiar with uh, Sean McConnell or Ryan Mitchell. Obviously pretty familiar with Cameron Belvin. Somewhat familiar with Jason McCannon's game.
That's going to be a one. 18-15 now. First round matchup here in tier one. Told you it was going to be close. The rounder seating said it should be so, so it is so. What were their seeds, Mike? 34 and 31. Oh, okay. Cameron and Jason were 31. That means I'm pretty sure they were both four and two. Looking at the bracket, seeing if there's going to be any right off the jump good matches. Jason's airmail wouldn't go. Oh, it moved a little. Jason with another point. They're within that two points they need, so essentially so one bag away. The first one that I found is uh, the winner of this game, if it's Cameron and Jason, go on to play Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. What does Cameron do with this? Airmail? Yep. Hits it. Go on airmail, and he will go off the board, and that's, that's going to be the game. Yep. First round win here for Jason McCannon on his home court of sorts, as this <laughs> tournament is put on to you by Fire Cornhole, and he is Mr. Fire. And Cameron Belvin. So they will move on. We'll see if we can't get you another good matchup here in just a minute. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court shortly.
All right, Cornhole fans. We are back at you again from the Chesapeake Conference Center in beautiful Chesapeake, Virginia. We're here at the All Cornhole Broadcast Court bringing you live coverage of the Beast of the East 2022 presented to you by Fire Cornhole. And we have ourselves a second round winner's bracket matchup in tier one, and it features Jason McCannon playing on his home court and Cameron Belvin taking on Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger came into this as the number two seed overall. So you would have to give them definite uh, heavy favorite tag right here. They're still doing down and backs. Look through the bracket and see if we happen to see any upsets. I don't really think there should be any big upsets so far because the top several teams all had buys. All right, these bags are going to be live right here. Ryan Smith and Cameron Belvin going to get things kick-started. Cover bag there kicks a little to the right on her. We'll see if Ryan can take advantage. See if he got a clean push or at least a push and replace here. I was going to ask you, Allison, if the right shot was the shot was the block there, but uh, Cameron wasn't messing around. She threw before I could get the first syllable out. I think she left a lane and two bumpers for Ryan to just take all of these bags. Yeah, her block should have been a little more to the right. Ryan's going to make her pay with two points. Gets two out of the three. Not too bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to give away some more bags here. Which which ones are we giving away first, Mike? We're going to go with some all cornhole bags, but there's going right. to be a catch. Here's what we need now. We need 200 viewers. Help us out. When we hit 200 viewers, anyone who has shared the link will be entered into a drawing for their choice of four cornhole bags from All Cornhole. They will ship them straight to your front door. So get on here, give us a share, give us a like. Let's see if we can get some people to roll on in. 200 is the magic number. We need 200 viewers. Nice airmail there from Justin Stranger. Jason could have went for the push there, but I think he just wanted to show he knew how to hit airmails too. He's hit a great percentage of his airmails. I think this is his third match on this court. And he's hit a whole bunch of them. Bag kicks a little, not not out of play, but it's going to need some help. I don't think it'll rattle in. If he wants it. I think he's going to have to go get it. Yeah, it's still kind of hanging there pretty good. He's going to have to go get it if he wants it, or just play it conservative with a three-point lead, which is what he elects to do. And Cameron will take advantage and take those two points.
Three, two is your score. Second round winner's bracket here, tier one, Beast of the East 2022. Jason was uh, uncharacteristic for him, at least today, at least today uncharacteristic. Shall we say he's been on fire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Fire has been on fire for the most part. He made a perfect lane there for Justin with two blockers to just... And dare I say, at risk of the announcer's jinx, I don't think there's any way Justin Stranger misses... I don't think the so either. With the hole with a lane. That's like a runway, an airplane runway, airport runway with yeah. lights. <laughs> Inviting the bag straight into the hole. He did use the bumper a little bit there. You think the one game advantage that Cameron and uh, Jason played is uh, affecting? I would say knowing the, the, who these two players are and what their work ethic is, I don't believe for a moment that Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger are coming into this cold. Very true. Points there for Cameron. Great Crook replacement there. Yeah, crooked number could be coming. She might get that four back that Jason just gave up. Oh, wow. Ryan obviously disappointed in that shot. We could have a lead change here. Can she get six? She's going to get four back. All right, 7-6. Cameron gives Jason a little shot in the arm. Let's see what he can do with it. Justin Stranger has been hot both last night and today. He's really been in a zone. So I know Jason's got his hands full. Boy, he parked that right <laughs> where he did the first bag last frame. Now, he can't, can't give Justin another runway here. No, He's got to finish up. That would be bad. There yeah, it is. There it is. He threw the slick side of the bag that time. I think if he stays slick, he's going to be okay right here. Oh, unless that happens. I don't think he really threw that poorly at all. Just one of those bags that yeah. went over the Great left side of the hole. Great pickup by Justin. Jason will finish with an eight unless Justin gets fancy with an and one, which he does not. Four points for Justin. All right, everybody, we are looking to give away some all cornhole bags. Any four bags from their website of your choosing. As soon as we get up to 200 viewers. So give us a share. Give us a like. Everyone that does that, we are going to put into a drawing to win a set of bags. But not until we get to that number. 200 is not asking much. It's really not. That's four from each state. We were. You want me to do more math? Because I can no. break 200 down a whole bunch of different ways. It's funny how my brain always goes to the math equation. We were almost there earlier. Another great airmail by Cameron. Or we could get three viewers for each county in Ohio. That would also work. <laughs> There we go. Jason straightens that yep. first bag out. Justin going block. Ooh, Jason stepping out to go around. Showing a diverse set of school skills here. He doesn't just make them. He throws them, too. Beautiful Look bag. At, at moments, I've wondered if Jason McCannon would not be the next fire sponsored player <laughs> I think he already is a fire sponsored player I guess I guess that would be the case oh given Justin another bumper that he didn't use and went off the back so now we're even
Good push through there by Jason. Justin's going to finish it up and get two. Smith just loving that left side. Yeah, it's likely. Well, I don't know. He's he missed several bags over there before. I say that's likely the result of target fixation when your opponent just misses and you can't help but take your eyes off of it. But you're right. It I may like be more bag. of a mechanics thing. Yeah, I like that bag that he just threw. Put it behind, but you don't have to try and block. Oh, ouch. He might should have told her to try and block. I think he should have just told her to throw a normal <laughs> bag and go straight through. They're all going. Yeah. He's, Ryan still has two bags left. Those bags are going to end up in the hole. There's one. Push and replace. He's still got hole control, dominating the hole, showing two at this there point. There we go. All right, showing nice one. Block. Yeah, showing one with a bag in his hand. <laughs> and he's going to lay up and just take his two right there. Ryan, in my mind, one of the smartest players in the game when it comes to board strategy. Ryan is, we've had some conversations before about how he actually watches videotapes of his pro opponents. Really tries to get inside their mind and know what they like to do so he can counter that. That's dedication. It really is. I think the, the football training brings that out in him. It, I'm sure it does, but I do, I just, from Ryan's sense of personality, I feel like he's just, that's who he is anyway. I think that you got to teach that, though, right? No? I don't think so. If it's in your soul to be organized and dedicated and committed to something, I think you're just going to do it without anybody having to tell you. I'm, I'm all of those things, but I'm not going to watch my opponents play cornhole <laughs> to <laughs> see how they're going to throw their bags. <laughs> I mean, there's, I guess there's probably no doubt he, he's extremes. got the concept from watching football video. Yeah. Uh, of his opponents. I mean, uh, the concept he probably got from them. All right. Still trying to give away some all cornhole bags, guys. Give us a share. Give us a like. As soon as we get 200 people on this live feed watching, we're going to give away some bags. Go ahead and like this video. Give it a share. Let's get everybody in here watching these. We're doing our part. We're logged in watching, too, so we count. That's very true. Yes, both of these teams are throwing the vengeance bag. Don't be shy to uh, post in the comments also who you got on this game. Who do you think is going to win? Who do you want to win? Let us know. That's a great push by Cameron. I can't believe those bags didn't go anywhere. They're not done yet. Does he go with it or does he try and... Yeah, Justin's giving him some coaching. I trust Justin's opinion down there. Definitely. He did exactly what Justin asked him to do. Knocked his bag in. And leave those other ones jammed. Yep. Cameron going up and gets two of them to go. That's going to be a wash. <laughs> she does exactly what she needs to do to escape. It's a lot of work for no points. That's right. So I see uh, Baldwin Renner playing on the court right in front of us, court number one. Oh, yeah, Jay Pato. Not sure what his partner's name is.
good push there by Justin. That the pushback faded a little on him to the right. Trying to go after it. He's still got a corner there. Jason didn't bully it, so Justin's got one more shot at it here if he wants to go. I know he wanted to go after that, but I don't think Ryan wanted him to get aggressive there. Is there a new score zone key? Yes. Okay. Because it's a different tournament. The bracket play is a whole different tournament than rounders. 19 to nine, Ryan and Justin now just couple points away from moving on to round three here in tier one. Ryan with a bag out of play has opened the door. Cameron and again that bag out of play is to the left so you do wonder if there's some mechanics going on with Ryan yeah oh great oh bag by nice Cameron for shot four. by Cameron gonna bring him up to 13 closing that gap Jason with the bag outside the hole now has left himself susceptible. Still draining air mails, but he's left himself susceptible to a four bagger for the win from Justin. Boy, he's, he's giving it everything he's got trying to drag that bag. One more time. All right, and in for the win for Mr. Stranger. He's got it. Ryan Smith, Justin Stranger, take down. They're going to move on to the third round here of Tier 1. And this still in the winner's bracket. I'm going to take this time to thank all of the sponsors of this tournament. Uh, this is presented to you by Fire Cornhole. They are the primary sponsor of this event. Show them some love. Also, All Cornhole, Gladiator Cornhole, Hall Mile, One Auto Group, Cornhole Chemistry, Cricket, USO, Cornhole Coastal, anything Cornhole, Siva, Cornhole, Kativa, Bust You Up Cornhole, and the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate all of them for helping to put this tournament on, but most importantly to us, near and dear to us, our sponsors for the season, all Cornhole, and also shout out to AAR Cornhole, as well as Dirty Bags. DirtyBagsCornhole.com, go check them out. In the meantime, give us a like and give us a share, and let's get all of these viewers up so that we can give away some bags. We may be giving more away if we can get, get some more up there beyond 200, but first step, 200. Let's get 200 viewers in here, and we'll give away some bags.
All right, Cornhole family, here we are again. Another big name matchup here. Matt Stout and Jay Corley with their crack at Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls. This is the first live action of the game. Matt's gonna, well, he toyed with the idea of stepping out for a better angle. Ultimately, he comes back in closer to the board. We have one team throwing the vengeance bags and the other team throwing the incinerators. That being Trey and Alex throwing incinerators. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right where he wanted it. He collected that bag, brought it to the hole, and then they just camped out on top of the hole. That score, if we're looking at it, Mike, over there is backwards. Train yeah, and Alex have two. To be, so. to be clear, yeah, to be clear, score zone is right. It's yes. the scoring tablet has the numbers reversed as to where the players are on the board. Ooh, Jake on airmail and missed off the back. Jay not knowing what to do right here with Trey having a bag in and two right in front of the hole. Going block but missed it. Big push here for Trey. He can get a lot of points. And he does it perfectly. And that's going to be a 10 spot. 12 nothing in round two. Birchfield and Rawls really seem to be settling in here at the right time of the year. If you remember early in the season, there was some question marks like, well, how are they going to do this year? There were a lot of question marks, especially because it's Alex's rookie season. So Alex's we never rookie really season, and then Trey kind of got a little bit of a slow start to the year. But I tell you what, like I said, they sure seem to be peaking at, a, at the right time with the World Championships coming up the first week of August. He still seems to be internally struggling, struggling a little bit, Trey, with just talking to him, doing like a little, little weird things when he throws that he's trying to smooth out. Looks like it's uh, pretty smooth th this weekend. Yeah, he's been doing really well. He won the Pro Skills Challenge Friday night. Undefeated in rounders play. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we're trying so hard. We want to give away another set. We've already given away four sets of bags today. We want to give another set away, but we need to get to 200 viewers. We're up to 120. Let's go. We can do this. Let's give away some more bags. Give us a like and give us a share. Let's get everybody in here watching this weekend. Cheyenne has her Renner jersey again on today. She switched from Bubenheim to back to Renner today. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Brandon and her uh, exchanged words in any way this morning or last night. Nah. Nah? No, they're good. I know, I'm just teasing. <laughs> we saw Brandon on our court this morning, didn't we? We did see Brandon. I wonder if he changed his shoes after losing that game. I saw him just a little while ago. He still had the, the white and the black shoes going. 
I don't think I've ever seen him wear those before, so I don't know where that started or why it started. Trey flirted with the idea of stepping out and going after this bag. I believe Alex called him off. Just play it safe. Better to give up two than do something crazy. Jay's really happy to take the two. They needed to get something going, Definitely. something on the board. Alex Rawls, I've said it a few times today, and he's going to have to get used to it for the next month. He's going to be called the co-number one player in the world, along with Mark Richards, having a great rookie campaign. Trey Birchfield, your ACL Pro Player of the Year last season. It's almost unfair, the talent level they bring to the boards, but if you're in the pro division, you're not really intimidated by all that. Shouldn't be. Great bag there by Matt. Do you think Alex goes after his? He does, and he missed it, and he's going to give up some points there. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Stout takes three. <laughs> 12 to five now. Matt Stout has got to be one of the funniest people <laughs> that I've ever met in my whole life. Did you see he just gave knuckles, and then he threw his arm back and goes, and snapped and goes, He is a character with a capital C. He really C. is. We will, we have to go back through all of the comments and look and see who uh, for the bag raffles earlier, not raffles, the giveaways. But uh, we got to go back later on tonight and look at who answered correctly. If there are multiple people that answered, answered correctly, we're going to do a drawing to see who wins. So we will announce those and contact those winners tomorrow. If there's a tie, we will do that infamous wheel spin to see who, who takes the bags. So Jay just got some points there. Did you hear what Matt said? What did he say? That a girl, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it lively. Always. I like that block. So 12-11, they've, they've quietly came back from that big hole they were in. It was 12-0. They ran off 11 straight. Don't jinx them, Mike. That's what I do. <laughs> that is what I do. Mm. All right, we're getting the just... viewers up a little bit. We're getting closer. We're up to 140. Let's go, guys. Give us a like, give us a share. We'll be giving away some bags once we hit 200 viewers. Anyone that has liked and shared this live stream feed will be entered to win some all cornhole bags. I'm telling you guys, it's it's your choice, four bags from the site. We're not gonna force any, any particular set on you. You get to pick your own, shipped directly to you. So pretty cool prize here. And that just ended the streak, Mike. You did it. I did you it. You jinxed him. Still only two points, though. Close game. Good shot there from Jay Corley. I think Trey was trying to collect his bag a little bit. Probably hit a little bit further to the right than what he wanted. Oh! He gets a, an assist there from Jay as Jay brings that bag partially back into the hole. And now he's going to have to 
get in the hole here without Trey if he wants to salvage a wash. He was looking to score some points. Now he's just going to be hoping to at least pull a wash out. Oh, and worst case scenario for him, he bumps Trey Birchfield in and he'll give up four there. That's going to bust the game open a little bit again. 18-11. Four right there in the game. Matt's got to get that bag to go. Yeah, you do. Yep, got to chase it. Going up. Perfect. Grabs it. Looks like he knows what he's doing out there. He when definitely you does. He definitely does. In for two. Staying alive. couple clutch shots there. He needed to hit the airmail drag, first of all. Then he needed to hit the open board just to keep the game going. Once he hits both of them. the pressure was on. Yeah. Early in the round, he knew he had a bag to give. It wasn't that's, all that important. Oh, that's going to yeah, be difficult to come back from. Yeah. Trey Birchfield, four-bagger, will win it. Actually, three in and one on will yeah. win it. Give us a like, give us a share. As soon as we get to 200 viewers, we will be giving away a set of all cornhole bags. Trey throws a 10, which is all he needed to do to secure the win. Oh, he, if he would have hit that a little differently. He could have pushed him off and, and yeah. went and slid in. If he would have done, if he would have thrown the six side. All right, well, that's going to do it. Uh, Trey and Alex moving on. And we're going to reset here, get another match set up. I see we're up to 150 viewers. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're climbing. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes once we get another match assigned here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court.
Welcome back to the Beast of the East, presented to you by Fire Cornhole. We are here at the Chesapeake Conference Center on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court. Mike Morton here with Allison Baldwin, bringing you all the live action from this weekend. Plenty of cornhole left this afternoon. A lot of cornhole left tomorrow. Big matchup coming right here. I think you might be familiar with one of these players, one or two. Three, four, I know all four yeah, of them. Yeah, I think, I think I'm, you got I'm a, a pretty little familiar partial. with three out of four. Noah Almanza is a, a new one. Yeah. Having a great rookie campaign in the pro division. Absolutely. Taking second in uh, Seattle at the Open. Winning his bracket. Him and his mountain climbing slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I believe they were going to go live here, or are they going back down? They, they may be going back down. Yeah, I think they're going back down. James and Cheyenne just had lost the spin and had to switch their bags, and they've switched from the Vengeance to the Incinerators, which is a huge difference. Yeah. So I don't know if this is going to go well for them. I probably would have had to go find some <laughs> brown Vengeance bags somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good good point reminder here that this is a bag provided tournament since it is sponsored by Fire Cornhole. Yeah, see that guy right there walking. I just have to ask him, can I borrow those for a minute? <laughs> All right, so these bags will be live. No Almanza leading it off. Give us a like, give us a share. As soon as we get to 200 viewers, we will be giving away a set of all cornhole bags of your choosing. You go to the website, you pick what you want, and we send them to you. So just give us a like and give us a share. As soon as we get to 200 viewers, we will be pick, we're going to pick a winner. Not today, but we're going to get everyone that liked and shared and put everyone in a pot and pick a winner. Big time airmail there from Cheyenne. All of our winners of the bag raffles today will be announced tomorrow, and we will be contacting everyone directly. both of them off to each side. There's that runway with the flashing lights. Noah hits it. Ooh, that bag would look like it was coming in hot. <laughs> That's going to be another wash. We remain scoreless here. Round three. The viewers are getting up. I like it. Let's see, how deep in this bracket are we? I wouldn't imagine we're too deep yet. There they are. Was this game three? Okay, they had a bye into round two. They won into round three. So this is to get to the fourth round. Okay. Another way to say it, they will, this will put them in the final eight of the winner's bracket. Gotcha. So still, no, uh, still a lot of play left in the winner's bracket alone. Cheyenne going up. Nope. She's just going to lay it up. And we are still going to have a 0-0 zero -zero game here in round four. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe these four like the camera time. They just want to stay up here. Oh. That. I don't think it's, it's touching, touching yet. Is it touching? Yeah, it's okay. touching. But I'm going to go ahead and say that's probably going to be some points Yep. over to uh, Noah Squared there. Noah choosing to block that bag. Allison, we're getting so close to giving some bags away. We are. We keep getting closer and closer. The more likes and the more shares, the sooner we'll be able to give the first set of bags away. I know we're doing our part. You're logged in watching. I'm logged in watching. I am logged in and watching. 
Uh, no. The uh, white bags are vengeance bags, and uh, James and Cheyenne are throwing the incinerators. They've been throwing vengeance bags all day, but they have one set of vengeance and one set of incinerators, and they lost the toss, so they had to switch over. So we waited a long time for our first points, but that first the first blood drawn is a big, big round there. Five for Noah Wooten. Five nothing now. Big crooked number. Shadrion looks like maybe she can pick up four here if she can finish out this round. Noah said, right. I don't think so. Yeah, he pulled that bag further into the hole. And, yep, Cheyenne will collect it for him. He got so it back. Two. Yep, that's what it's going to be. James with first throw. Not messing around. Straight in the hole. Noah says, I'll throw a block. Just going to go with it. Ooh, that could be two. Get him back in this. Yes, it is going to be. Four. No, it's going to be four, and we're going to have a lead change here now as Baldwin Renner go up 6-5. This Noah Squared team intrigues me quite a bit. I'm wondering what brought them together. It's not a natural pairing, I, I don't believe. Well, maybe just because of their names. Their names? <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, Noah and Cameron were just okay. driving through his neck of the woods from Chicago to Virginia. Okay, who, who was throwing? He lives in Ohio. Who was throwing the 10 different sets of bags just because they wanted to? Tony Smith so and kinda, Hunter Thorne. Kind of reeks of that, you know? Hey, our names are the same. Why don't we just throw it together? I don't know. I think the tin bags was way weirder than this pairing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting close, guys. Give us a like. Give us a share. So we had another lead change there as the Noahs are back on top. 7-6. Looks like Noah might be able to pick up four now this round. Obviously, as evidenced by the four players on the current board in front of you, some of the best players in the world are here at this event. We have got a lot of cornhole left in front of us. Oh, he just bar soaped his bag. That's going to be six. Ouch. Thirteen to six in favor of Noah Squared. Oh, Cheyenne oh. went for the airmail and missed off the back. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Oh. Had, oh, he just bar soaped himself and went off the back. Wow! I was just as soon as I said that's gonna <laughs> hurt, she sneaks out of that frame with a point. With a point. Very sneaky of her. Whoa! We must have missed something there. It was a four. It was a four. And we just hit 200 viewers. We are at 200 viewers, Mike. That is going to be one set of all cornhole bags going to a lucky viewer that has liked and shared our post. So we will do, we will spin that wheel. And we will let everyone know tomorrow who the winners are. We got to go back and look through and look at the shares and put everyone on a spin wheel. Yep, but thank you so much for helping us out. We appreciate all of you for watching. Thank you to our sponsors, All Cornhole, Fire Bags, putting on this tournament. And even if you don't win the bags, you get to watch some pretty high caliber cornhole. This is, it's like we're at a national, Mike. It is. Mini national right here. Yeah, we got these four bags. We have Alex Rawls sitting here watching. Feels like home.
Cameron Holland over here watching. That's going to be a wash. Cornhole Nation, we got a we got a little treat for you here. We got a get. We got us a name sitting next to us. We got the man, the myth, maybe soon to be legend. I don't know. It's oh. a little early for a rookie. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, and I tell you that right to your face, my friend. But but uh, man with a bright future in front of him. We got Alex Rawls sitting here joining us for for a few frames. How, How you doing, doing, Alex? Doing good, man. Undefeated. Having a good day so far. Having a good weekend. Yes, sir. So, let me take you in time back to uh, the skills challenge yesterday. What would you think of that? It was interesting, wasn't it? It was interesting. The two-minute challenge kind of got me. You know, I, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think if I would have went back and did it, I could have probably done better. But Were you the one that was holding, like, 15 bags at a time I trying was. to throw? <laughs> I just played smart. You had, a, you had an arm full of bags at one point. It was pretty inter Unlike interesting. Unlike Tornado that just piled four sets of bags all the way up and down That's the board awesome. to grab. <laughs> He got an advantage. He was lower at the bottom, so he got to see how everyone was doing it and decide how he was going to. Right. Yeah, the players that threw a little bit later, I think, did have the advantage of seeing how things I went. Think, uh, I think the cut and roll, that was the deciding factor. That was the sight. Like, yeah. Like Frank Marlin that can't cut, you know. Like yeah, because he, <laughs> he only needed he only needed four cut shots at the end to, yeah. to catch you guys, and that's just not a shot that's. Yeah in his repertoire well, as far because, as regular because shots. Because we made it so hard, you, know, you couldn't touch the bag in the middle. You know, so yeah, that does bag, make it hard. So yeah. Not good, so. Two more points to the Noahs. It's going to make it 18-10. James taking an extra minute here. No one they're going to touch up. So you think... Uh, you're obviously throwing well, and I think I knew you well enough to ask if you're making it to the finals, and the answer is probably a, a yes. I mean, I'm going to say yeah right now. All right. We're winning. All right. So, so is there another team out there that you've kind of looked at on the other side of the bracket? Is there someone you're expecting to see? or, or you I mean, just... obviously you have your expectations, but, you know, I just throw my bags and see what happens. Speaking of bags, what do you think about the, the come here and use the bags that they have here rule? I mean, they're not the best, but, I mean, like, I'm just going to tell myself I love them just because I have to throw them. You know, just, I don't really have an option. So That's very true. Just got to trust in what I'm doing. It does It does create a pretty pretty level playing field. Uh, there's probably a handful of players in here that are familiar with those bags, yeah. and those players might have a slight advantage. But as I was mentioning yesterday, all of the fire-sponsored players are not here. Right. So all of the pros that are here – do not throw these bags regularly. Right. So it handicaps you all pretty equally. Would it? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, and also it makes it difficult because there's only two colors of each set. Oh yeah, that's so, James and Cheyenne have been throwing the Vengeance yeah. bags all day yeah. and just had to and switch. The only other bags they have are Incinerator, yeah. so and it's a not, completely different game. Not broken game. in, right? And yeah. Because and because they don't go off seating here, it's just a flip of a coin or a spin of a bag, and that's just. Yeah. Whoever wins a spin. Winner take all. Has the advantage yeah, if you we, don't have the broken bags. We decided yeah. that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. If Should you... have made it seating. <laughs> well, we were really talking about, we started out with the blind draw, so there's not really seating in the blind yeah, draw. And that's, that. we didn't even, like, think to hear where it was actually going to be seated after rounders. All right. I guess we should have taken that into consideration. Next time, Alex. All right, and next time. <laughs> next year. <laughs> So, so Noah squared moving on up to 20 right now, 20 to 10. James and Cheyenne have their back against the wall. I think it's going to come down to James and Noah. I don't think Cheyenne's going to miss in these kind of times. She likes a, a slicker bag too, where James doesn't really like the slicker bag. So she's one, he's, the, she's one of the clutchest players in the ACL. She will not miss a bag today in this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How many times have we seen her go on runs of 30 or 40 bags during a clutch stretch? Lucky. Yeah. It's going to come down to this end right here. James is a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> Allison says in more ways than one. <laughs> no, 
Noah goes block to try and keep him from hitting straight in that hole. That's what you got to do when someone's on slick bags. Block and make a kick. Oh, he pushed his bag out. Noah just needs to finish up. Noah's From what I saw Thursday, Noah's not going this? to have an issue. Oh, He's he going to try. Good try. Noah just needs to go in. Got it. And, yep, that will do it. Big win there for Noah squared. They're going to move on to the final eight of the winner's bracket. And I want to thank Alex for stepping in for a minute. It was cool to have you up here. Yeah, thank we appreciate you, you Alex. Me. All right, we'll get you up here more often. But in the meantime, go sling some bags, my friend. All right, thank you all. All right, Allison and myself are going to take a quick break. We'll be back with another match here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court momentarily.
All right, cornhole friends, family, and nation, we are back with more doubles coverage from the Beast of the East 2022 presented to you by Fire Cornhole here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court. We have a loser's bracket matchup to bring you, and by now I think you should be familiar with these faces. I think we've seen these teams three or four times each, I feel like. Jay Corley and Matt Stout taking on Jason McCannon and Cameron Belvin. Jason and Matt are going to be going live here. These bags will be the first live bags of this game. All right, and so here's the deal. We said we're going to give away a set of bags when we got to 200 viewers, and we did, or we will. Next one, we need to hit 300. Let's hit 300 viewers, and this one will be a set of fire cornhole bags if we can get up there. A set of your choice of fire cornhole bags, whatever's on their website, you get to pick from. Any four bags shipped directly to you. So let's get the viewership up to 300 and give away even more bags. We're giving them away like crazy today. All right, so big frame there. Gets the game started. Matt Stout with a big six on Jason. Jason's played really well today, but that frame wasn't his best piece of work. Cameron with a big four coming back the other direction. Was that a first bag airmail from Jason McCannon or did that just get away from him? The game has gotten so easy, he's just showing off now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in here trying to look at the scores. There's a Quite a few winner bracket games going on that I'm interested in seeing who's in the lead. Tried getting a couple of them moved over here, but they had already started, so. frame there a seven from stout so back-to-back -back sixes and sevens for matt we'll make it 13 to four here over belvin and mccannon all right we still got a good ways to go but if we can get this membership or the viewership <laughs> nah, why not join us be a member too if we can get our viewership up to 300 the player on the court right now, Mr. Jason McCannon, has agreed to send a set of cornhole bags to someone. You pick them out, ship them to your house. So let's get, get our viewership up and give some bags away. See court seven down there. Cheyenne Renner playing Brandon Bubenheim. Oh. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one. All right, two for Jay, 15 to four now. They got themselves a double digit lead here on Cameron and Jason. And Jason is just loving these airmails. I'm telling you, I have been impressed. You have to give credit where credit is due. We got Raining a, them down. We got a fire player watching, Kaylee Hunter. We wish you were here, Kaylee. We're missing you this weekend. 
I started to say, there's no way he continues to rain him down, but he's already <laughs> made up his mind. It's raining fire bags right now. He's just dropping them in the hole at will. Kaylee taught him everything he knows. <laughs> <laughs> he hit three out of four there. First bag of the game, he threw airmail at an open board. Both of these uh, teams are throwing the vengeance fire bags. So Jason with a five there on Matt Stout after giving up a six and seven to start the game. Now he's getting some revenge. 15 to nine. So I think Cheyenne uh, may have just knocked her soon-to-be husband out of the tournament. You think he'll come tomorrow with two of the same color shoes on? <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be bad luck. Your fiancé puts you out of the tournament. Well, it depends on what your expectations were for the tournament. And you don't have to win the tournament to feel like you had a good tournament. Mm. If I was, if I made <laughs> tier, if I made tier one and won two matches, I would feel good about my day. I would say I wore the right lucky shoes that day. <laughs> I don't know if your standards are the same as <laughs> everyone here, Mike. I I guess I could see that. <laughs> Cameron, meanwhile, with another couple points, and this has turned from a, a blowout into a tight game here. There's the airmail again. He's just throwing them for fun. I think he is. Just showing off. He doesn't get to play on the broadcast court every day. He just threw another one. <laughs> I'm, I can't believe I'm watching this. I want to stand Open up board. and start. I want to stand up and start cheering. That's Jason. A, that's a that's a Trevor Brooks move if I've ever seen one. Open board airmails. Cameron with a little miss to the left there. Jay Corley can stop this run. We appreciate you tuning in and watching us here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court as always. Having a good time here. Watching the best cornhole players, or, or quite a few of the best cornhole players in the country, battle it out all weekend. We had a pro skills challenge yesterday. Trey Birchfield taking that down. Then we had the blind draw last night, taken down by Grayson Waller and Jordan Camba. And some fantastic cornhole today in doubles rounders, and now we're Getting deep into this bracket here in doubles. Yet to come as singles tomorrow. Part of the singles action is going to feature a high stakes shootout. $100 ahead. We'll find out which players were brave enough to jump their, jump into that pool right there. That's going to be a, a fun event. That is going to be a very fun event. Meanwhile, we're trying to get viewers up to 300 so we can give away some more bags. So give us a like, give us a share, and you will be entered into that drawing if we get up to 300. It's fun to give away bags, isn't it? It's fun. It is fun. Open board airmail, Jason McCann. <laughs> Matt's like, are you serious? Who is this guy throwing all these airmail? If you would have told me that Jason McCann would throw half his bags, open board airmail. Well, we're having a good time talking about it. You would have told me that Jason McCannon was going to throw half his bags open board airmails against someone like Matt Stout and Jay Corley. I would have told you the board, the game would be over in three rounds. I, same. Little did we know, that's what he does at home. He just practices his airmail. If that's the case, it certainly shows. He's draining them. Cameron missed that push just a little <laughs> left of where she wanted it. Oh. 
Jay showing two right now. They each have a bag left in, in their hand. Chad said, is that Jason McCannon or Jimmy McGuffin? <laughs> Jason McGuffin, <laughs> Jimmy's little brother. There you go. Oh, oh. Going up. Oh, she drags it. <laughs> that bag wanted to fall backwards. It was. If that bag was, if her bag would have been a little bit higher, I think she would have got the and one. That bag was dangling precariously there. She just brings it on in with her. 20 to 11 now, Corley Stout. How long can Jason hang on throwing as well as he has? Up he goes. For those of you watching that don't know, Jason is the owner of Fire Cornhole. Just over here throwing air mails. He's <laughs> Making showing it his, look easy. He's showing his sponsored players. This is how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, here, you're going to want to replay this one. Here we Let's go. See what he does. Back left. It's up. Bam! Jason McCann and called are his you shot. Right now? He called his shot. <laughs> these clips, these clips will be on the ACL Facebook page eventually. Oh gosh. <laughs> I said eventually, right? Yeah. I said the same thing. He's giving me Adam Hissner vibes with the drink in his hand. Wow. So he, he chose not to throw that yeah, bag. Yeah, he chose not to throw his last bag when Matt's bags all clogged up the hole. He had nothing to gain by throwing it. But he's happy with the wash. Score stays 20 to 11, and everyone's having a good time. We are all definitely having a good time. If you're not here, you should be here. If you're not watching, you should be. If you're not give watching, you didn't hear that, but that's fine. <laughs> give us a like. Give us a share. Let's get to 300 viewers so we can give away some more bags. This time it will be fire bags. Give me two. Hey. Two He's talking in her backswing. <laughs> <laughs> Going up. Oh. Hits it clean. She says, I can hit air mails just as well as you. Probably saying, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Jay shows he knows what he's doing. If you guys see the camera moving, that's because Jason is currently yeah. hanging yeah. from the trusses. What a push there. We are we are seeing some Whoa. phenomenal cornhole. Jason's pumped up. <laughs> that's pumping me up. Look at that dog. Did you see the dog? Uh-huh. That, that dog is not on a leash. Look, he's about to head to the broadcast court. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, open board air mailing that one. That one might be the one that does him in. He's stepping out to the edge. And dropping another air mail. It's a show. No charge here, ladies and gentlemen. No charge for this show. Off the lights, he says. <laughs> as long as it's not off the camera. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And he hits the high air mail. <laughs> what is going on? Jason McCannon goes down, but, man, that might have been the funnest game I've seen in a long time. Jason's had a few performance-enhancing beverage. Well, the personality is coming out now. It enhanced did, It enhanced his performance. Did you see the picture that the ACL used, I think, for the sign-ups for the World Championship? And <laughs> no. it's the picture of Jason. Oh, my gosh. It's hilarious. All right, folks. We're going to take a quick break. We'll get another match assigned to us here and bring you some more action from the Beast of the East. We have, uh, we're gonna have the winner of a game that's still playing right now. So it's gonna be a winner bracket game. Right now, the winner of Jordan Camba, Devin Harbaugh, Justin Stranger, and Ryan Smith. They're gonna go on and uh, 
that we'll get that winter bracket game next. Awesome. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Stick with us. Cornhole.com has the largest online selection of cornhole bags for players of all levels. Through years of research and development, AllCornhole.com is the perfect bags for even pro-level players. With over four unique series to choose from, including Game Changers, All Slides, Slide Rights, and Steadies, you'll be sure to find the right bags to dominate the competition. Whether you're looking for bags for family gatherings, competitive league night, or the pro circuit, visit AllCornhole.com today to find the perfect series of bags for you. I need all the wins, yeah. yeah. Ain't no L's, I gotta get a no call to quit, yeah. yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets, yeah. yeah. Better move out the way, cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all it is. You yeah. better move, you might get knocked out. All right, Cornhole family, we are back for some more action here at the Beast of the East 2022. We have a winner's bracket matchup here. You scroll out and you see exactly where we are in the winner's bracket. This is to get to the king seat match. Ryan Smith, Justin Stranger. Justin Spires and Michael Townsend 
They will play the winner of that. Will play the winner of Birchfield Rawls and Noah Squared. <laughs> Excuse me. Getting choked up over that. We're getting pretty deep here. Okay, now we're back. Sorry about that. Now we're back here. They're going to do one more down and back. This is a winter bracket semifinal. Both these teams trying to get to the king seat. The winner of this will take on the winner of Birchfield Rawls and Noah Wooten, Noah Almanza. Again, still doing the down and backs. So we're down to the final four. Yes, down to the final four. One side of the bracket, we have Trey Birchfield, Alex Rawls, currently up seven to four over Noah Squared. And right here on this court, we have Ryan Smith, Justin Stranger, Justin Spires, and Michael Townsend. Winner of this will go to play in the King Seat game. All right, and this is your first live frame of the game. We have a Bernie wannabe over here going, yeah. these bags are live. Ryan Smith going to kick it off here. Sorry about that. I'm having some problems with the keyboard. There we go. <laughs> And by problems with the keyboard, I meant just a little mental malfunction user, on my own user part. User malfunction? Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to say that as nice about myself as I could. So again, this is the final four of the winner's bracket. I don't think there's any surprise seeing Justin Stranger, and Ryan Smith here, but how about Justin and Michael? Who called this? I don't think anyone in this room would have called this. They're, I mean, they're here, so they've done something to get here. Let's take a look at the bracket. Let's see who they did the damage to. They're on the other side. Everybody watching, we appreciate you all. As soon as we get to 300 viewers, we're gonna be giving away a set of fire bags. You get to pick which ones you want. We're just gonna send them to your house. As soon as we get to 300 viewers, so like this live feed, share it. Let's get everybody watching. All right, so Justin and Michael, here's their path. They uh, beat Jeff Hyatt and Rick Krasinski 23 to three. Then they beat Wayne Corpru and Gerald Gray, 22-19. That's, that's, that's a good, good win. win. Mm -hmm. Then they beat Robbie Spivey, Josh Allensworth, 22-14. Then they took down Jim Tonetti and Tim Zimmerly, 21-8. Yeah, that was the game I was trying to get up here. And here they are taking on Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. I mean, I guess we should give give uh, a little bit of equality here. Some love to Justin and Ryan. Let's take a look at their path. So they came out of the top half of this bracket. They came in as the number two seed in the tournament, so they had a bye. Then 21-13 over Cameron Belvin and Jason McCannon. 22-7 over Grayson Waller and Landon Bass. Oh. 
23-14 over Jordan Camba and Devin Harbaugh. And then that's where they currently are. All right. So, again, they came in as the number two seed. Let's, uh, I'm scrolling down to see what Justin and Michael came in as. They came in as the 30 seed. Nice run for them. And we got us another guest here. We have none other, <laughs> none other than Jason McGuffin joining us. <laughs> I was dubbed that by Matthew Stout. Matthew Stout nicknamed me Jason McGuffin. They were uh, naming you that in the comments, too. All right, so Chad, Chad Littlewood, actually. Oh, so, Chad. so <laughs> yeah. we're so going. We're going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to check with Jimmy and make sure he's okay. We're not breaking any trademark laws <laughs> here on the last name. I won't make a T-shirt yet. <laughs> <laughs> I Jason. felt like I felt like you were channeling a little bit of Adam Hisner with the drink in your hand, and then definitely Trevor Brooks with the open board air mails. So first bag <laughs> of the game, open board air mail. <laughs> My thing is. Uh, my airmail's on, that's what I shoot the whole time. It worked. It, that, it has worked before, and it has not worked before. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a, it's like a coin toss. I, I, I'm, hey. here to, I'm here to tell you that was the funnest match of the day. It, right. was, it was a lot of fun. When it's on, it, it looks good. It's pretty. All right, so we're, we're uh, looking at... Seed wise, a mismatch. Hmm. But all props and credit to Justin and Michael for making it here. Let's see if they can get back in this. They fell behind eight to nothing. They're the 30th seed coming into this. Right. Yeah, it's number 30 and the number two seed in the whole tournament, Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. Well, I, I had to play them earlier and I was trying to shoot air mills, but they were not. It working. didn't work as well as it did last <laughs> game. Yeah. And that's the game Cameron was cooking on Ryan Smith. So was she? Justin just ate me up. <laughs> <laughs> if my airmail was on, it would have been a different story. Point? Nope. He is going to give up give some up. points. Yep. 11 to nothing here. Nothing but love for Chad Littlewood in the allcornhole.com broadcast court. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate we everything you guys are doing. We like to think that we can work well with anybody, right? Oh, yeah. We can be, you know, in, in, in the government contracting world, we used to have a term for it. We're competitive we're, we're competitors <laughs> and we're teammates, right? right. We're, we all have the we're same the goal. Same team, right. That's right. That's a great bag by Justin. But I tell you what, I've been spitting out that mouthful all night, though. What's Welcome up? back to the Beast of the East 2022, presented, presented to you by Fire Cornhole. We're here on the All Cornhole <laughs> Broadcast right. Court. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. It was a lot of money. You get your name on there, too. <laughs> well, then you, hey, deserve, Cla you Cla deserve every time I've said it. Right. Claude Hill, he's a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about how uh, your fire players aren't here this weekend, and you said, I don't care they're not here the winner is going to be win. They're going to win with fire oh, yeah, bags. So. Win. Right, right. <laughs> fire's winning no matter so, what. We're good. So Jason knows how to even the playing field of the right. odds, right? It's a guaranteed <laughs> win for Jason McCannon. Yeah. Well, what happened was. Well, what I wanted, happened I, was. I wanted, you know, to make it a, a level playing field for everyone. If we brought the fire players, it's a wrap. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, sting. Oh, my man. Sorry, guys. I didn't, I didn't say that out loud. I didn't say that out loud. No, I'm just fucking. Oh, oops. Five. Is We're going to have to X that out. Seven thumb button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Kaylee was watching you throw your air mails. Oh, Kaylee was? Yeah. Yeah, she, <laughs> was on, she was on there watching. Hey, Kaylee's seen enough of that. I beat her. Oh, yeah? I've thrown those before. You hear yeah. that, Kaylee? No. But she's beat me, too. Re I, I need to see a broadcast court rematch singles there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so did you get in the, in the $100 ahead high stakes? Shoot out tomorrow? I can get in it. Right. <laughs> I think that'd be awful fun. Air mail's on. <laughs> I think that'd be awful fun. You don't have somebody sweating. <laughs> All right, so in the meantime here, back to the action. Justin. 11-2. Yep, Justin gets a couple points there. Gets him on the board. Let's we'll see if Michael can keep building on that now that he's got first bag. Are these local Virginia boys here on the side? They yes. are. Okay. Yes. 
Give us a like. Give us a share as soon as we get to 300 viewers. Yeah, Jason, I don't know if you know this or not, but you're giving away some bags <laughs> if we can get to 300 viewers. Let me, let me share this to the fire. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, share I that. Think, uh, I think your wife did earlier. Well, I asked her to. There you go. Perfect. Reshare it so you can hurry up and give away some more bags. So this is on all cornholes page? Yes. All right. Love. How many viewers? 112 right now. Yeah, we got to get to 300. We, we hit 200. We've been, yeah, we've been we over 200 two. earlier. I must say, watch this. <laughs> That's an order. That's a commandment from Mr. Fire. Here we go. That was on my page. I need to send it on the fire page. We'll see how much. We'll see how much directly the numbers rise right after you share these We're two things. We're at 116 right now. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's see how many friends you have, Jason. Ride this wave to 300. <laughs> Let's see, just inspires. Meanwhile, back to the action. Could have snuck in there to take control of the frame. Now. Now he's going to have to hit an airmail if he wants some points, or I don't really know if he's a cut, cut shot or a roller. I think he was just told by Mike to Lay it board up. it. Yeah, board it for the wash. Play conservative. I don't know. I think you're down by that much. You got to do. You got to do something. Air, I would airmail it. Yeah, he's I would going. go up. Yeah, he went up, but maybe the smart play was to lay up. I mean, it's one point, and you're down by how much? I would probably have shot thirteen and two. I, probably, I can't imagine that you would, Jason. Probably. <laughs> and the sun will probably set tonight, too, right? Okay, 14 to 2, Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. They are fighting to get to the king seat. Let's see, do we have an update on how the other match is going? Let's scroll over to the other side. We have 13 to 10, Noah Squared beating Birchfield and Rawls and the other. Ooh. Match. Winner of that goes on to play the winner of this game right here. Cameron and I lost to Noah Square 21 to 20. In oh, rounders. wow. In That's rounders. a good game. But did Noah. We would have won had Cameron not told me to slide it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if she said shoot it, it would have been done deal. She said slide it. I shot it. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, you, if you're really catching that. She said slide it, so he airmailed right. it and yeah. lost. I was going to slide it because that was the right shot. Right, but when she told him to slide it, he said, nah, I can't do what I'm told. I'm I've got to. I'm not going to follow directions. Yeah. <laughs> right. So everybody remember that when you're playing with Jason. If you need him to, to hit a slide Come shot, out. tell him to airmail it. Give us a like. Give us a share. Let's get these viewers up so we can give away a set of bags. 134 currently. All right, you're good for 20 viewers. 20 viewers. You're good for 20 <laughs> viewers. Your worth has been determined, Jason. <laughs> All right, Justin, with another shot here. Pick up two. And he does. Bingo, Justin Spires with two. 16 to four, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, right? Gotta start somewhere. Michael straight in the hole. Justin's probably Jamie, happy to go bag for bag. Jamie Graham is watching too. He oh, says Jamie. that you should tell everyone how you played at the last conference. How did you do at the last conference? So let me tell you this. <laughs> oh, no. Any story, story that starts time. with, let me tell you oh. this. While Jamie was in the restroom trying to, you know, get his guts right because he was not feeling well. Oh, my gosh. I, well, I hear that about him a lot. I was going down and back against Kaylee Big and Tyler Big time Poitras. airmail there. That was our first match. Kaylee Hunter, Tyler Poitras. And I was, stro I was beating both of them down and back <laughs> for like 10 minutes. Jamie comes up, the game starts. I give like a seven to Caleb on the first <laughs> first throw, and it was all over. So that. nobody wants to all believe right. what was going on before that, right. right? So it's it's nerves for me. It's nerves. Well, Justin with a four there against uh, Mike Townsend. Yeah. He's going to park them on twenty now. This is kind of the heavyweights doing what they do right here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
It was like we mentioned with the seeding. Definitely uh, David and Goliath here. Oh, yeah. The number two versus the number 30. I would like but, a rematch right now the way I'm throwing those air mills. So. <laughs> <laughs> we had tickets to the air show and we didn't even pay for them. <laughs> Stout was <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't believing it. He wasn't. He was looking over here like, what is going on? All right, that's going to do it. Yeah, Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger on to the King Seat match where they will take on the winner of Noah Wooten, Noah Almanza, and Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls. What do we have there on that score? Let's see. Right now, that score is currently 15-13 with the Ooh. Noah's Noah's winning. Wow. I believe right. the next game that we're going to have here is the winner bracket final game. So uh, we're going right. to wait for that one to finish up, and then we'll be back. All right. Stay tuned. Thanks for sitting in for a minute, Jason. Yes, we'll sir. take a break. Thank we'll be guys. back in a minute. What are they playing to? All right, we got a, a fun little side treat here for you. Jason McCannon has challenged Ryan Smith to an airmail contest while we're waiting for a match to be assigned. Airmail contest, Jason McCannon, Ryan Smith. They both miss bag number one. Jason in. Ryan in. Jason in. Two to two. Three for Jason. And three for Ryan. Woo, we are treated to an air show here. Again, folks, we are just waiting for our next match to be assigned, having a little bit of fun. Jason McCannon challenged Ryan Smith to an airmail contest. After four bags, they both hit three of them. Jason kicks off this round with an airmail, followed by Ryan. Another one for Jason. And Ryan. There's a miss. There's a miss. Can Ryan capitalize? Doesn't count. Oh, we were leaning towards no, but Jason gives it to him. No, I, I think it's all right. I like it. So you know they're going they're going to 11? First one to hit 11 air mails? First one to hit 11? All right, it's five, six to five, Ryan's favor right now. 
<laughs> Mess me up. And took him out of his took Jason out of his rhythm there, all the discussion. So six to five. Ryan Smith, six out of eight. Jason McCannon, five out of eight. We'll get another match up here just as soon as we, I think we're waiting for the Noah squared Birchfield Rawls match to finish. Yeah, I believe so. In the meantime, enjoy the air show. They've cooled off now. They missed <laughs> first four bags from this end. There's one. We got to give that one to Jason, uh, yeah, right? You got it. You, you got to even it up. It is a rip. I think it's 8-6. Eight, 8-6, six. Eight, six. Eight, six, yeah. 8-6, to six, Ryan leading. They've thrown 12 bags. Ryan Smith hitting on 8. Jason hitting on Nine. 6. Ryan only needs two more. 10. 10. 7. 11. 11 to 7. 11 to 8. <clears throat> 12. One more. Just, oh. Oh, and he hits the light. The <laughs> he hit the chandelier. Ryan Smith hits 12 out of 16 here. Jason McCannon tried to call him out. Ryan said, I'll take that bet. <laughs> yeah, and, man, Jason hung with him for a long time. They were both five out of six. All right, that game over there has ended. Not sure who won. Let's check it out. All right, remember everyone, we are in a bag making giveaway or bag giveaway frenzy, I should say. We are trying to give some bags away. If we can get you guys to help us, we get up to 300 viewers. We got another set of bags. We've already given away five sets today, but if we can get up to 300 viewers, we will give away yet another set. This time it'll be a set of fire cornhole bags. Your choice of four bags from their website shipped directly to you. We will go ahead and, and have a drawing for anyone that has liked and shared our stream. So if you haven't done that, that's what you got to do. And let's get up to 300 viewers. Up next, Ryan Smith, Justin Stranger, Trey Birchfield, Alex Rawls. I wonder if I, we'll see Ryan hit some more airmails like that. that was, Probably. That was fun. All right, while we're waiting. It looks like the tablet isn't connected because there's, I don't see how, where the bracket's updating. He's a pro for a reason. That's true. He is a pro for a reason. All right, so again, Ryan Smith, Justin Stranger, and Birchfield and Rawls are the two teams left in the winner's bracket. Let's look, look down and see who's still left alive in the loser's bracket. Oh, Matthew just lost. Matthew and Peyton made a good run. They just lost to Blake Berry and Trey Turner. Let's see. We got Robbie Spivey and Josh Allensworth taking on Kinsey Beach and Quentin Terry. Winner of that's going to play Cam Holland and Travis Graven. Winner of that will get to Blake Berry and Trey Turner. On the other side of the loser's bracket, we have James Baldwin and Cheyenne Renner. And Jay Corley, Matt Stout taking on Neil Bendig, Rick Starcher. The winner of that takes on Jordan Camba, Devin Harbaugh. And then the winner will move on to face the baldwin Renner duo. So both, both of the loser's brackets are a little... They've got one, the, one half of the loser bracket is running quickly, and then the other half of that loser's bracket side is running a little bit behind. So Blake Berry and Trey Turner and James Baldwin and Cheyenne Renner are waiting for the other matches all to play out to get to them. 
And then we have Justin Spires and Michael Townsend still alive after their nice run to the semis. And Noah Squared also sitting down there in the loser's brackets off their recent loss in the king seat match. No, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not in the king seat match, in their match to get to the king seat. So, All right, we're still waiting for the players to show up here. I'm going to go... Uh, Gonna go on mute for just a minute while we wait for them to show up and we'll uh, we'll bring you the action just as soon as it gets underway here. All right, Cornhole Nation, we're back one more time, yet again from Chesapeake, Virginia, here at the Beast of the East 2022 Cornhole Tournament presented to you by Fire Cornhole. We are here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court bringing you all the live action here. We got a great, great match. I know we say that a lot, but it's so true. A great king seat match here for you between Justin Stranger, Ryan Smith, and Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls. Believe this frame is live already. This is the first. This is the second frame. This is the second frame. They started on uh, Alex and Justin's end. Yes. All right, so no score, but this is the second frame. How did they forget to tell us that they were going live? They, they, they should know better. All four of them. <laughs> They may have looked up, but I think we might have been switching seats. Or they may have said something. We might have been switching seats. I saw it, but I just didn't say anything. <laughs> that 
ring around the hole looks like a light when you're looking at it like this. All right, so who are you taking in this game? Uh, I'm taking Alex and Trey because Good the call. last time I picked <laughs> my son, I jinxed him. So I do the same thing. I suck at picking, so I'm hoping that I'm wrong. I don't want James and Cheyenne in my bracket. I, I don't want anything to do with it. Looks like someone's going to get some points here. Yeah, but it, it is tough to pick against Alex and Trey. They are. I mean, it is. Partners. Absolutely. I mean, they're not throwing their normal bags, but they know how to play together. I mean, Ryan and, and Justin know each other, and they've played some, but not like these two. From about the same area, all of y'all, right? Yeah, Ryan's about an hour from where we are. They both have partnered with Justin's current partner, James Washington. And One of my favorite cornhole players. I told him, I said, I wish I could tell you that you're my favorite cornhole player, but I can't do that. And I wish I could tell you that you're my favorite cornhole player named James, but I can't I, do that. You can't do that either. <laughs> my wife in Chicago told me her favorite player is Alex Hicks. Oh, I'm a big baby goat fan. I mean, she's got a baby on this court here, too. Yeah. He's not quite a baby anymore. But. So, huge baby goat fan. The more that I watch Eric Davis throw bags, the more that I just want to keep watching. Justin may, able to, may be able to pick up some points here. Not with that bag. Everybody's starting to dwindle out. Yeah, everyone's getting kicked out of the brackets and starting to uh, go do other fell. things. Alex has two bags just hanging in the hole. Going up. Oh. Oh, I was about to say, I can't believe those are the slick bags that are here today. Great Justin collect by Justin. Day. Give us a like, give us a share, everyone watching, please. When we get to 300 viewers, we will be giving away a set of fire cornhole bags. You pick them, we send them. So uh, as soon as we get up there, we will have everyone entered. We're, anyone that won bags today, we're gonna go through everything tonight, announce tomorrow. So give us a like, give us a share. I mean, Win some bags. one more bags. I think everybody wants more bags. I think everyone just collects them. We have about 300 sets, and Justin still wants more bags. <laughs> I think he went for the block them. Great block. Ryan's probably going to roll right here. Oh, air mail. I'm and he hits it. Well, we just watched him put on an airmail show, so that was he's good. been practicing. I thought it was going to be a bigger blowout against McCann, and then it happened to be. I think Jason threw pretty well. Did you watch the game, Jay Corley and Matt Stout, where Jason just threw airmails every every bag he threw an airmail? He no, did really well. I, I wondered if that's his best throw. He might as well just keep doing it. <laughs> that's, right? what, that's what we were talking about. It's two to one, Justin and Ryan. I hate Justin or Ryan keeping the score because he always does it backwards. From my he does view here. always do it backwards. He just it's must do it wherever it lands. He just does it. Can you see that monitor yeah. over here? Yeah. Okay. But I know that Ryan must just go. Well, this is the way it is. I'll just do it this way. <laughs> that would throw me off entering yeah, it that way. Exactly. 
maybe Ryan just thinks, well, the closest one to me is the one I entered the score on. Alex going up and missing that bag. Going up again. And Missed it. Again. It's only going to be two points. He should be able to get that or Trey's going to knock him in. for us who are just sitting around watching? I can't understand what they're saying. Uh, that's what I was trying to figure out. To me, as I say, that it should be the least to the east, and that's who we <laughs> are who all can play in the blind draw. The least to the east is where I'm at. Alex cleans it up. Justin follows. I think we're going to be here for a while for this game. It's possible, but I don't have anywhere <laughs> else to go. Me either. But the loser bracket's a little, little ways behind. Got some catching up to do. I mean, you eventually at least get to go home tonight. I don't, I don't know that that's a good thing. How far away is your hotel? <laughs> about 20 minutes yeah i got a uh, hour drive i wanted the parking lot hotel but it was pretty expensive wow what is holding up trey's bags i don't know i, I no can't believe he just idea. did that though i thought he was gonna go for it Calling for a step out slide shot. Which sometimes ends up in a side rail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're throwing the stickiest bags on earth. I don't know if I agree with that, but they are pretty sticky. Yeah, I heard the, uh, the contraband bags are pretty sticky. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't move there. I don't know why they would move with your bag. Justin tends to be smart. <laughs> they didn't move before. Why would they move now? <laughs> Seems logical. Yeah, Ryan just threw. Come on, guys. <laughs> I like that block there. Yesterday, Jordan Camba and Grayson, what's Grayson's last name? Waller. Grayson Waller won the blind draw. In the meantime, give us a like, give us a share. When we get to 300 viewers, we are going to give away a set of fire bags. You pick them, we ship them. Man. Two airmails missed is not as normal. He doesn't look very happy. <laughs> look at that sad face. He is sad because he knows. Well, that wasn't the worst thing that could happen. Look at that. That is the saddest face that I've ever seen. Oh, 
Oh, it's only three. Well, you mentioned Grayson Waller, and I'll say what I said to him this morning. He posted that Jordan Campa carried him to the win. No way. Completely untrue. Yeah, no way. That kid was throwing. He carried his own weight. You can't have one person carry you all the way through a blind draw. You're gonna run no, into a, really a team well. that has good throwers on each end and you gotta look I like he's trying to be around. humble. You try to be I, humble I and you don't wanna brag that I did it, but it wasn't just Jordan. He he pulled his weight. I like that replacement I, there I by do. Ryan. It makes it a little bit harder for Trey to drag and pull that bag in. Yep. But, but it is Trey Birchfield. Yeah, he's stepping out a little bit to try and try and get it. Oh, 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 oh. worst case scenario there. Ryan in for two. On, Ryan. Oh, oh, no. Stuck up. Oh, my gosh. Alex. Forgot what bags he was throwing. Getting, getting we won't little, say what he really said, but he forgot getting what Getting a little angry about the bags. So, a reminder to everyone, we've got some singles action coming up tomorrow. Looking ahead a little bit, we'll bring you some advanced division singles bracket play at 9 a.m. It starts, so we'll probably start sometime around 9.30 or so. And then there is a high limit – or. Well, what do they call that? Uh, I don't know. High, not high rollers. High stakes holem. High, high stakes holem. Singles bracket. Hundred dollars ahead. Starts at one p.m. I tried to talk Jason McCannon into entering it uh, airmail only, so we'll see if that happens. So that should be a lot of fun. Mike, I don't know how you're going to broadcast. I heard you're in that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the funniest thing said on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court. Mike, if you're in, I'm in. <laughs> a waste of good money. Whoever gets more points would be a winner. We can bet ourselves. I mean, if we both go 0 and 2 and lose 21 nothing, I mean, then I guess we tie. All right, so I know we can do this. We want to give away that that next set of cornhole bags by Fire Cornhole. We're sitting at 177 or so viewers right now. It's it's fluctuating a little bit. We appreciate everyone that's already shared. If you haven't, though, make sure you do it. Let's get you, some more people in here. If you want to again, go ahead. <laughs> sure, yeah. Because Double, triple, triple share. You nothing, know? nothing harmful will come out of sharing it. All you're going to do is potentially trigger another giveaway. 300 viewers, we give away some more bags. Can they sign in on multiple devices? Yeah, that's on, that's on the individual <laughs> user. <laughs> and for those who know me out there, can you help me out and prove that I'm better than Jason McCannon? <laughs> and I can get more than 20 more viewers than Jason did. <laughs> As we get down near the end of this tournament here, too, you're going to see nothing but high-quality teams. There's going to be some great matchups down down the stretch. So, Can Ryan knock that bag backwards back in the hole? Oh, I don't know. That'll be called the plus one instead of the and one. It looked oh. like it was hanging. And it didn't work the way. All right, how about this? If we can get to 350 viewers, what if I could get Jason McCannon to shave his head? Oh, gosh. He wears a hat all the time anyway, doesn't he? I guess, yeah. Yeah, how much hair does he have? I've never seen him without a hat. <laughs> I don't even know if I could convince him to do that. I doubt very seriously. Maybe Tom Stranger will stra shave his head. <laughs> I'm kind of crazy like that, but I was thinking about yours. <laughs> You shave half of your head, I'll shave half of my head. If we get to a 1,000 viewers, <laughs> maybe. How about we shave Matthew Morton's head? I don't think you can hold him down. He's too wiry. I'm kind of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we've been we've been at it. This is going to be Allison. Is this your fourth week in a row? This next weekend is your fourth week in a row. Next week will be four weeks in a row. We're doing a lot of broadcasts here in a short period of time. But I got to tell you, it's so fun to get together with the cornhole community. I mean, at every tournament, the crowd you know changes slightly depending geographically where you are. But there's a lot of the same overlap. It's just always fun to be out and about amongst this this community. Well, if you need help next weekend, I still am not playing in the open. All right, there Does we anybody want to play <laughs> with me? Tom is partner shopping. How about Allison? Uh, I'm not allowed. Not allowed? No. We can't both leave yeah. Mike stranded. Wait. Well, isn't Jake's takes coming back next week? No, Jake won't be there oh, next Jake's week. Jake's not there either? No, he's on vacation next oh, week. Oh, next weekend's a vacation. Yeah. All right, we're up to 196. So here we go. Getting like. ready to cross the 200 threshold. Next stop, 300. <laughs> I love it. And all without Allison knocking any microphones over to try to trigger my laughing fits like last weekend this guy let me just tell you mike is not a joker right well, that's what you think well <laughs> so when i left for chicago this bad boy right here in front of me that's running everything yeah. was at my house hmm. got about an hour from home and james goes do you got the computer and i was like oh my gosh i don't so we had to turn around so I'm on my way here yesterday, and Mike's like, hey, just want to make sure you didn't forget the 550 again. And I'm like, oh, my God, okay. I thought you had it. And he's like, no, I, I thought you had it. And, uh, you know, being as how Mike's not a big joker, I he had me fooled. I called him. I was Real like, Are you, I really don't have it. Straight faced as could be. Yeah, he was like, just kidding. And I was like, I hate you. What a disaster it would have been, which if, if you could really appreciate on the way to the tournament and you don't have the hardware to run the broadcast, oh, yeah. the <laughs> panic that goes through your mind. Oh, oh yeah, I have been there. Yep. Thank God I was only an hour from home and my mom grabbed it and met us. Wow. But it would not be surprising if something was forgotten in the Morton household. <laughs> Usually the other Morton, but... I understand. I just said house. But, but... Yes. They're going to come down and look at these bags to decide what they want to do. So I, I will tell you this, speaking of, of forgotten stuff, it's, it's humorous and it's kind of tattling on ourselves, but it is what it is, right? I'm afraid. There has been two, not one, two times we have left the house got an hour away and realized our suitcase was still sitting in the living room floor. I haven't done that. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> drive all the way back home oh, just gosh. because because we each thought the other grabbed the suitcase and we just jumped in the car and left. Who's the each other? You were lying that Matthew picked up something like yeah, well, if it is, I don't that's wanna, your fault. I don't want to tell on him too bad, but I mean, I know for a fact that as the dad, I said, hey, grab that suitcase and put it in the car. <laughs> the question is, did he hear me? And my fault on I didn't follow up. Ryan's bag's clogged again. Yeah. Throw the bag in the hole is what I would tell Justin. 18-6 to six now. Birchfield brawls in the lead. Winner of this earns the king seat where they will finish, obviously, no worse than second place in this huge tournament. All right. We have passed over 200. We're looking to get to 300 so we can give away some fire bags. Oh, Everybody give us a bags. like. Give this live stream a feed. Once we get to 300, we are going to give away some fire bags. You pick which ones you want. We'll ship them to your house. We've already given away five sets of bags today. Let's make it to six, at least six sets. He wanted to go for it, but he knew better. 
Better not uh, change the momentum too much by giving up a bunch of points. Two is manageable, especially when you have a lead like they do. So we're getting more views. Is it because of me? So do I pass Jason McCann in, in like coolness and yeah, influence? Yeah, we'll, we'll give it to you. Sorry, Jason. Some very unfortunate things happen to Ryan with these bags. Nice, nice drag for Ryan to stay in the game. All right, so as we hit the nitty gritty here, if there's anybody that you would like to see step in and try to commentate with us for a little bit, I'll walk around the room and try to grab someone. Drop in the comments if there's any of the players here that you'd like to see step in for a minute. We'll go grab someone if, if they have the availability and they're interested, all right? I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of woo hole people screaming for Chris Tornicola. He's got his own thing going, I think. He does. Alex has got a nice little lane here for a push. What's Justin going to do? That's going to do it. Congratulations, Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls. They've just really been on a roll all weekend. First and second in the Pro Skills shootout last night. And now they've earned the king seat here in doubles. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Don't go too far. We'll be right back on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court in just a minute.
All right, Cornhole Nation. We are back here on the All Cornhole Broadcast Court. Mike Morton, Allison Baldwin, Tom Stranger, who's been sitting in a lot with us. Really appreciate you taking that third seat. Yes, we do. It Tom, helps out. I, we have got fun. us a, an exciting match here. James Baldwin, Cheyenne Renner, Jordan Kamba, Devin Harbaugh, four big names in the cornhole world. Of course, James and Jordan were partners last year. Partner change now. And they're standing on opposite ends of the boards going at it here. One of them will end their day in this match. One of them will continue to move on, trying to make it to our king seat holder. Awkward knuckles. Where's Wally? <laughs> <laughs> Look, that guy in the back helped him out. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so who? So who's in the king seat again? We just watched the, the match. The king seat is Trey Birchfield, Birchfield and, and Alex Birchfield Rawls. and Rawls. They were on a roll. So I think you said there was seven teams left in the loser's bracket? Seven teams, yes. Mike, do you consider Devin Harbaugh now a local Yes, no. he was one uh, of my. He was <laughs> at he the was, same time. He was, he was our local, and now he's defected to the Norfolk area, right? Yeah. Next he's, season. Yeah, technically, technically, he's still a Pennsylvania thrower. I think exactly. through the end of this season. Yep. Um, didn't play in our in our uh, conference events. Next season, he will be a uh, Atlantic Conference member. But for local purposes, I consider him a local player here. He's been to, the, to our local tournaments at Vanguard quite a few times. So the winner of this will go on to play Noah Squared. Loser goes home. Might depend on who the loser is. They may have to stick around. Mike, I don't know that anybody else got that since you just <laughs> shot a look at somebody. <laughs> I will just... tell you the Baldwins drove separate, so. All right, so James, if he loses, will not have to stick around. He could go home. I'm sure he will. He usually runs out the door as soon as he's out of the tournament. So does he take the little one home, or is he already gone? He has already left. He spends uh, his Saturday nights at Grammy's. That must be terrible. He must hate it. Grammys? Grammys. He is spoiled rotten. I hope she's watching and listening. He gets spoiled rotten over there, and he loves every minute of it. And so does she. <laughs> All right, everybody watching, give us a like. Give us a share. Let's get viewers up to 300, and we'll give away some bags. Great airmail by Devin right there. James thinking twice. Ooh. Nice cut shot right there. That is why I say Devin Harbaugh has the best cut shot in the game. Love it his cut shot. Looks disgusting when it leaves his hand. You don't it even understand how slick these boards are, too. He's cutting yeah. on slick, slick boards. Ooh. Oh. Little heat from James Baldwin there. That's Came in be too hot. For Devin. But ten on. Big 10. 10 nothing now. Kamba and Harbaugh. Nice sneak around. Jordan now has hole control, dominating the front of that hole. So I see in the comments uh, someone asking for some Matt Stout on the mic. I might have to go check his, his uh, alcohol level. Oh. Yeah, I was going to know. I don't know that this Where? is uh, Stout time. I don't see him. But if he's here, I will, I will give that a whirl. Someone in the comments was asking for him. I, I said, hey, give us a list of some people you'd like to see. I don't see him here. 
The Stouchin wagon might have left the building. <laughs> the Stouchin wagon, I love that. To our band that we had last night. Eh? I don't know. They were pretty good. I liked the vibe that was going on while they were here. Good yeah. push shot from Devin. We need a little vibe in this room right now. It's, it's kind of quiet. The party was last night. Serious <laughs> time today. That shot that Devin hit is one of the most underestimated shots in the game. Throwing from the right side of the board, hitting a push shot where the bag is on the left. Or I'm sorry, on the Devin's on the left side. He's hitting a push shot where the bag's on the right. I'm gonna go run and see if I can find Matt Stout. Devin Harbaugh can throw any and the craziest shots you will ever see. I agree. We have seen it for years and years. Hopefully we'll get to see it for years and years. Well, sometimes I don't want to see it. <laughs> True. <laughs> and I'm sure you don't as well at times. Yeah, that's right? time. That's if you're playing true. Justin Stranger or, my, or Matthew Morton, we do not want to see those shots. But other times. Nice double four-bagger there from Jordan and Cheyenne. Devin pulling that back a little closer. Can he get it? Clean wow. airmail. He leaves it for James to have to contend with here. I don't think he left it on purpose. Now, I don't think it was on purpose, but. Well, worst case scenario for, for James. Yep. It. Big five spot for Devin. And just like that, 17 to 2. Kamba and Harbaugh running away with this one. I started to say threatening to run away with this one, but facts are facts. A 15-point lead is running away with it. Come back, Mike. Yeah. 17 to 4. 17 to 4. If you're going to do it, you got to start sometime. It doesn't have to be a monster frame. Just, it, just it got to get not, started. Devin Harbaugh is not missing many shots down on that end. And just, and as just I say on that, cue, welcome to the announcer's jinx, Tom. I wish I could do that more often, particularly when he's playing someone I know. But when that happens, he just makes more of them. I like that shot. Yep. He went blocker to force James into an airmail. He turned a missed bag into a point there. That's called manufacturing points. Jordan right away with a blocker. Cheyenne pushes it up the board and covers it. They're going to start a little train here. Both of them content to just sit behind the stack down to the last bags. We'll see. Jordan's going to go up off the back. Now Cheyenne can board it for a wow. point. That's what she does. She'll take one point, try to stop that momentum that Jordan and Devin had built up. So it looks like Matt has left the building. So uh, maybe tomorrow we'll get, get him up here. Let him get a little bit of aiming juice and then <laughs> give him on the mic. A little bit of aiming juice and then give him the a mic. A little bit. I said, yeah, you're great. Yeah. We were talking about Matt Stout a little bit earlier. He is a character. He is the life of the party. Always. 
And if you're saying, well, he's not always at a party, you're wrong. You don't know him because <laughs> the party he follows him. He is the party. I mean, if he That's is right. the party, it's always with him. The party follows him. Good guy. Devin stepping out for a better angle here. He does have a push attempt. It would be for the game if he can hit it. And he does. he does. Perfect shot from Devin Harbaugh. And that will seal the fate of James Baldwin and Cheyenne Renner. They had a great run, but it comes uh, to an end here against Devin Harbaugh and Jordan Camba. They're going to move on through the loser's bracket. We're going to take a quick break. And we will be back shortly. We're hovering about 215 viewers. Getting close. Come on, guys. Wow. Let's get more bags away. We'll get there. We'll be back in a minute.
All right, welcome back here to Chesapeake, Virginia at the Beast of the East Tournament. These bags here are live. This is a loser bracket game, so the loser goes home. We have a special guest on the mic right now, Cameron Belvin. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm out of the tournament, but... Well, you weren't even planning on playing, right? No. Why not? You didn't feel like it? Yeah, we decided last minute to come, so... Oh, okay. I so said you... I would watch, and then Jason... Well, at least you got one of the funnest, fun. right? Yeah. Exactly. You got one of the funnest partners at the tournament. Can't yeah. beat that. The last three games, he shot all air mails. <laughs> <laughs> we loved watching it. It was fun. He had an air. Did you see the airmail battle with Ryan Smith? They did a first to 11 airmail back and forth. Ryan oh, won. Oh, that's funny. They put a little wager on it. <laughs> but uh, Jason was feeling the airmail, so I guess he... Figured he could take on Ryan Smith. Noah and Noah up too right now. How do you feel about the bag situation? Honestly, I threw them. Like, I wasn't even going to play singles somewhere, but I'm actually thinking about playing because I didn't throw them that bad. There you go. Which ones did you throw? The Vengeance? Yeah. The slower bag? <laughs> oh, you almost hit it, too. Oh, five, zero. What do you think about... Oh. Uh-oh. Scorekeeper might not know what's going on. <laughs> what do you think about Bernie calling you all the Brack Pack? I had to ask him what he even meant by that. <laughs> I, don't, I, st I still have no clue who you the don't? Brat Pack is, so I'm just like, oh, okay. He's like, gosh, I make t-shirts. Okay. You can probably make some money. <laughs> I have to look up what it is. <laughs> I'm not quite old enough to know, but Mike might know. The Brat Pack? What's that? The Brat Pack was a group of celebrities back in uh, the mid-'80s, I want to say, that uh, kind of got in trouble and, you know, rebelled against Hollywood. Well, I don't want to say they rebelled against <laughs> Hollywood, but they just... <laughs> They're bad kids, Cam. He's just calling you bad kids. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they, they just... Thanks, Bernie. <laughs> always kind of living on the edge, not not kind of playing by the rules a little bit. The wild childs, that kind of stuff. But uh, they were super popular. And, there you uh, go. They, they were, and they were kind of the best at what they did. That's They, they kind of ran Hollywood because... That's who they were. So there you go. So that's probably where he gets it from. That's probably the worst description of the Brat Pack in the history of descriptions. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I can't say they don't live on the edge, but they definitely don't do. And <laughs> they don't that. live on the edge. <laughs> that's saying they do, but they don't do the bad part of it. <laughs> Still follow by rules. I think someone had given me that explanation prior. I just didn't recall. I think he'll go up. No, nope, just going to go in. It's a no. Let's see who they move on to play. They will play the winner of Justin Spires, Michael Townsend, Cameron Holland, Travis Graven. Oh, Devin, give it back. Yeah, you followed him right over there. Ooh. Oh, man, that was slick side. He might fall back, though. Mm. So oh, that's a good shot. I just wanted to throw in there that the last match we just watched, Devin Harbaugh threw an 11.14. Absolutely throwing some heat with those fire bags. <laughs> Someone said you carried Jason as far as you could, Cam. <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> but we lost to some tough teams. It wasn't too 
pads either. There you go. Can't be mad at that. Jordan's always had a good airmail game. This might be a tough push. All right, so we're kind of late into this nine to nothing, but uh, oh, let's let's hear uh, if you're watching. Let's hear your uh, predictions. What, what? How do you think this game's gonna end? Give Ooh, me some Jordan score. Missed that. Give me some score predictions in the comments. Give us a like. Give us a share. Once we get to 300 viewers, we're gonna give away a set of fire cornhole bags. You pick them, and we're gonna ship them right to you. Great bag there by Noah Wooten. Okay, this phrase is starting to get a little trite and a little overused, but that's simply just Noah doing what Noah does. <laughs> so how's it been on the road this year, Cam? I know it's the first year that, like, you traveled a little bit last year to the Nationals, but not anything like you've done this year. Uh, it's been nice because I've, like, visited a lot of states that I haven't visited before. Yeah. So that's been nice. How's Airmail City? Um, well, I, Mail City. I know you don't like the scooters. <laughs> oh, definitely not. <laughs> I'll let Noah go get our food for us. <laughs> oh, so. Yeah. If, it can, if going to Cali consisted of just staying at Shamar's house, it's not bad at all. But outside of his house, mm. uh, I don't really like Cali. <laughs> Too many people. Yeah. Someone wants to know when you're going to start rolling bags, Cam. Noah says he can teach me, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Has he tried teaching you, or he just He's hasn't? tried. I, I mean, if anything, Bella's tried to teach me more. Yeah. Like, women's doubles. <laughs> She's like, roll it. I'm like, oh, that's right. I th think I've kind of got the concept. It's just putting it into place. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what I needed to do. It's just Doing it yeah. the hard part. <laughs> All right, everybody, give us a like, give us a share so we can give some bags away. Once we get to 300 viewers, everyone that has liked and shared this live feed will be put in a drawing to win some fire cornhole bags. So we got a few predictions rolling in. So I far, see that. so far it's all all Noah's. 2314, 2117, 218. Jordan's four-bagger game was unmatched last year. Yeah, we heard. <laughs> oh. May Noah's fall. We lost four. No one. Yeah, it's, it's getting away. I didn't see this happening. Either of you see this happening? No. Not after the way Devin just played his last game. Yeah, again, sure. he threw an 11.14. I think it was through eight rounds, so 32 bags, if I'm not mistaken. Threw an 11.14. He used all of his good bags on James and Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron will be the number one female in at least two years or sooner. How about that? Thanks you got some people. Faith. Yeah, you got some got people some with a lot of faith. That's right. <laughs> I hope to see that happen. I'll tell you what, if it does happen... It would be fantastic for the game because that means we've got a lot of great players already and another one taken. If you overtake Cheyenne Renner as the number one player, that's just great for the game because uh, yeah. it just means there's a lot of terrific female players. I have to say Kaylee will probably be right there with me. I would imagine so. She's been insane lately. Straight up the middle. Straight up the middle, and then we had her during the blind draw, and she, what did she hit, 14 out of 15 airmails in that game? It was ridiculous. But to a large extent, like those players, I, I just, I don't even think of them, of them as women players. They're just, they're just great players, right? They're some of the best players in the world that just happen to be women. Oh, yeah. And then you ask the guys. They think women should be separate. I've heard I've heard a lot of talk of like just completely like you're it's just separate like most sports. Yeah. Well, one thing that I will say, and I, I think this is, I don't know if this is universal, but a lot of the players, no matter how they feel about the subject, 
they respect or don't respect the player on the other side of the board, and it's not based on sex. It's it's based on how good they think that player is. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Cameron? I don't know if I agree with that. You don't? No, I feel like I feel like the women depends. get underestimated. I, I think there may be that. some players that do that. I feel like generally most players don't care. They just oh, care about how good you are. That's going to be the game right there. That's a little shocking. Noah squared moving on. More than a little shocking. 24 to 1. Jordan Camba and Devin Harbaugh's day comes to an end. We should be about to the rapid fire portion, right, in the bracket? So I believe that the rest of the games are going to be shown here. So we will be Next bringing. Week, fourth, fourth place, right? It looks like this other side hasn't started yet, so I think they might be coming up here. So Matthew Stout just checked in to start watching. Matthew, we combed the building looking for you because we were going to put you on the broadcast with us but we couldn't find you. All right, so we're going to have Noah Squared, Cameron Holland, and Travis Graven. Our viewers are starting to click up there a little bit. We lose a few when we uh, have to go between matches, but once the matches start back up, we start clicking back up there again. All right, all four players have reported to the board. We're beginning our down and back. So, Cameron, do you care to be a prognosticator? Do you have any uh, thoughts about who's going to win this game? Well, of course, I'm going to have to go with Noah and Noah. I had a feeling that was <laughs> – see, I took that softball and I set it on the tee for you so you could just hit it out of the park. But even if me and Noah didn't have a relationship, I still think I'd have to. Okay, so even taking the, the personal feelings out of it, you, you objectively think they'll win. I get it. Yeah. Even though we did, me and Jason played Travis and Cameron and Rounders, and they, the only bag Cameron missed was his last bag, and it didn't even matter. But they were really good. Yeah, they, they are definitely a good team. They're a, a local team. Cam Holland in his first year as a pro. Travis not a pro yet. He has, I believe he has signed up for the qualifier, and I believe he will be a player that needs to be watched very carefully there. Definitely. He's really good. He is. Gave Noah a run for his money a few times up here in singles. Yeah. One of the, the many players, we always talk about this area as being strong at Cornhole. He's one of the many players that, that helps to make that true. People may not know the name outside this area, but he will whip you if you're not careful. I think that was like a Mark Richards. Yeah. So, so you heard it here first that uh, Travis Graven could very well be next Mark Richards. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I took those words and I twisted and manipulated. He definitely has the potential. You're right. He does. He does. But I don't think anybody can predict. You, you think you can, but nobody can really predict. He's on another level. Though. Yeah. What Mark Richards did is just almost unheard of. I mean, we all knew Alex Rawls coming in, and we had heard a little bit about Richards, but we just didn't see this, or the vast majority of the country didn't see what he put, put on this year. Didn't see that coming. Brought someone over here to talk to you, Mike. Well, how about that? <laughs> I've now got Cameron Belvin on my left and Cheyenne Renner to my right. How about that? So, Cheyenne, a little bit of a bummer there, that last match, but how do you feel on the day? 
Um, I feel like I played as good as I could okay. under the circumstances. Right, yeah. It, uh, we've talked about this up here on the court, and, and maybe you feel differently or feel free to agree if you think I'm right, but because none of the pros here throw fire bags regularly, all of the pros were at an equal disadvantage this weekend, or for the most part. W would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that, and then bags not being broken in. Yeah, that's definitely an issue. So if you were, if you had enough foresight to purchase a set beforehand and break them in, you did have maybe a 10% advantage over the rest of the field, maybe even more than 10%, as the rest of the field either dealt with brand new bags today or some of them bought bags last night and tried to break them in overnight. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that definitely comes into play. But I, what I did like is the particular bags that were used this, this weekend. It, no top player uses them as their regular bag. No top player that's here right. uses them as their regular bag. So they don't have a huge advantage. So I asked Cameron, and she gave me her, her, her personal opinion and her objective opinion. Do you care to play prognosticator in this match? How do you see it going? Um, I think no and no are going to win. Okay. I, but only because I don't know Travis. You don't know Travis as well. I don't know him. And, and that's, again. I say, you can't sleep on Travis and Cameron. Yeah. When, when, right before you came over here, we were just talking about how Travis is one of the players in this area that gives our area a great reputation. Because even though you may not know his name, you hear about how strong the players are here. He's one of those I players. I have heard a lot of people talk about him. Yes. Here. Yes. And he is, I believe, going to the pro qualifier this year. So, and if he goes, I'd like to believe he's coming out of it. Yeah. So, you may be seeing a lot of him in the future. Doesn't he throw a slick side kill shot? I believe that's what he throws. I. Unfortunately, I don't get to see him as much as I should because he throws, you know, locally, I call it anyway, the other side of the water. He throws on the south side. We kind of stick to the peninsula for the most part. So I don't see him as much as I'd like to see him throw. But he's rock solid when we do see him. So we have someone in the comments asking if Ryan Smith is still in the tournament. He is. The winner of this will go on to play Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. The winner of that will go on to try and double dip Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls. Right down to the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. So I'll, uh, since I've got two fantastic pros on my right and left, I'm gonna start on my right. Cheyenne, out of the names you just heard, who you think is gonna pull off the tournament win? Mm, I think just because they haven't lost yet, Trey and Alex. Think they'll hold on, they'll defend the king seat? I think so. All right, what about you, Cameron? I might have to say the same thing because that's a tough double dip. But it is a tough double dip. Noah and Noah gave them a run for their money, 21-19. I did see that in the bracket. That, that, was, that was a tough game right there. So, Noah had a rough one round when it was tied at 15 and gave them five. But, so. All right, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to say on your left hand, they're going to not be able to pull off the double dip. But yeah. on your right hand, it's going to be Noah and Noah, right? Oh, no. I still think it's going to be. <laughs> I'm trying to keep you out of trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're, we're talking here. But in the meantime, back on the boards, Cam and Travis have built up a little lead here early, 5-2 over Noah squared. Yeah, big. I think Noah has one off. No, I think Noah has one in his hand. <laughs> Four. Oh, no, he does have two off. So yeah. Okay. Five, three now. Miss from Noah Almanza is going to open the door a little bit for Cam Holland. So are either of you signed up for the $100? $100 ahead, high stakes, hold'em shootout tomorrow for singles? 
I believe that's the one I signed up for. All right. How about you, Cameron? No, I'm not in it right now. You're not in it? No. Come on. We got to get you in that. I kind of thought about it. I told Noah if they make it back to the finals, if you pay for me. There Only we go. Only because I did throw those bags pretty decent today. Good. Yeah, you and Jason did make a really nice run. That was fun to watch. Jason was putting on his show, and in the Only meantime, I, you're just being ba- being solid down there, throwing bags in the hole. <laughs> Only because of my head, I knew I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never a block game player, but today, that was definitely me. I did that, too. I was throwing the vengeance, and I would throw my first one, because I can't throw them hard enough on the sticky side, so I just throw it up there, and it... Good and block. it was stopping. Yeah, and they were collecting like on the push pretty, pretty good. Well, I'm excited for that event tomorrow. We got to get you in that, Cameron. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. There's so many great players here. It should be a great time. I thought about playing advance, but I told no, I didn't want to be here at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning, too early for Cameron Belvin. I don't well, know if you especially if I can wait till one. Yeah, if there's a choice. Well, the, the difference is I think forty dollars ahead for the singles advanced, or a hundred ahead for the high limit. Yeah, that's why I told, originally said I might do advanced, and then I was like, no. I'll <laughs> like, pay the no. extra money and play in the high limit. So we do have the advanced singles tomorrow. Bags fly at nine. We'll be on air shortly after that, and then at one p.m. that high limit. $100 ahead, single shootout begins 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're going to want to tune in for that. All right, so we had a couple quick lead changes there. Noah squared quickly went up 6-5, and then immediately Holland and Graven right back in the lead 7-6. bag there from Noah Wooten. So Cheyenne, do you try to save that bag on the right or you try to drag it? Or Travis just threw threw really fast and took the decision out of our hands. I personally probably would have stepped out a little bit. And and hoped for the best but yeah. not not really get too yeah. desperate. Travis played it conservative, just put the bag in the hole, gave up four, and we have another lead change as they go back and forth here. 10 7, Noah squared. Noah's first bag, he's going left. Yeah, good point. He's got another one over there now. Let's see how much damage Cameron can do. All right, I got it. Okay, I've talked about this a few times, and I get excited about it. I've got this idea, and I'm I just like spilling it out here. I want to create a coffee table book, and in this book, it's going to be nothing. You just leave it on your coffee table. People just look through it. Nothing in there except for photos of the ACL pros as they release the bag. So all the facial expressions of all the pros just in one coffee table book, right? Just just to look through and have a good time. What do you all think of that? Um, I probably wouldn't want to look at my... Uh, well, you can skip the page you're on okay. if you want to. Yeah, All right. and that's a good idea. Okay. Uh, it's funny because when I was throwing up here earlier and the guy was taking pictures, I could feel my face because <laughs> I'm throwing a slower bag, so I'm like, put more umph on it. I'm so you like, can, you're self-conscious of it? <laughs> I thought to myself, I was, like, I was like, I don't even care what my face looks like. I'm telling you, there's some really, really great facial expressions when people release the bag. And, I, and I think I know who you're talking about on this court. There's one <laughs> specific one on this court. Because I said the same thing yesterday. Yes. 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 There's one specific one on this court that really makes a great one. But in reality, everybody does A lot it. of people do, yeah. That's right. I mean, I'm sure my face is pretty contorted when I'm letting the bag go, too, and I'm a nobody.
But yeah, I think I think th nobody steal my idea, all right? Because I'm gonna come after you for trademark infringement or <laughs> copyright or something. I don't know. No, Maybe if you give me a foreword or a credit in the book, I'll let you do it. I know you asked us for our prediction. What's your prediction on who's gonna who's gonna win? I think right now Birchfield and Rawls are just too dialed in. I just, I don't think it's, obviously, maybe it's equivocating a little bit. They can be taken down, mm -hmm. but I think they're just too hot right now. So if I had to, to pull out some money and put on it, I think they hold off the double dip attempt, no matter who comes out. They're going to be waiting a while. Whoever comes out loses, like, it's going to be hot. That is true. Yeah. The, 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 the flip side of that is... Both of those guys are veterans of the game. I'd like to believe they're not going to get caught cold. Well, they're both over there throwing. Right. It's not like they're not used to being in a king's seat, right? This really should be something I wouldn't be doing. Yeah, the king's seat's kind <laughs> of been measured. Knows. King's seat's kind of been measured for them. They're so used to sitting in it. Oh, no, I'm like, oh, my God, King Seat, right, I'm going to sit here and wait. <laughs> wait till the last minute. Yeah, I always wait until, like, the game before starts playing. And, and then I start, start trying throwing. to get heated up. Not a good plan. I wouldn't suggest it. So early in the season, I did some stats. I looked through dozens and dozens and dozens of brackets to try to see if I could bear out the people that say that double dips happen a lot because of the reasons we're talking about, right? And I thought double dips happened a lot. But looking through a lot of brackets, what I found is double dips happen 25% of the time. Wow. That's it. It's another one of those psychological things where people always overestimate the percentage of airmails hit because they only remember the airmails they hit. They remember the game that they went 7 for 7, but they don't remember the two games before where they went 0 for 2 and, and 1 for 3. Mm -hmm. And when you, at the end of the day, when you add them all up, their percentage is almost always lower than what they remember. And I think that's very similar to what happens with the double dip attempts. They're very memorable when they happen, but when they don't happen, you tend to forget that. Right. So in the meantime, our viewers are up to 262. We're almost ready to give away another set of bags. Cheyenne, we've given away five sets of bags so far today, and we're trying to give away a sixth. If we can get to 300 viewers, we're going to give away a sixth set of bags. Wow. Let me open up my phone real quick. Yeah, you can you can enter. It doesn't say no pros allowed. So what are we going to do, like or share? Got to like and share, and when we get to 300 viewers, one of those people that is liked and shared is going to win a set of fire cornhole bags. Your choice from the fire cornhole website. Shipped directly to you. You don't need to come and get them. Actually, I know I've already liked and shared. This You've already video. liked and shared, so you're already eligible. Travis taking a good look at this, taking his time out. Even on the board right now. Let's see if we can see this short airmail. He was trying to do the Too short, short. airmail. He bumped it in. Trampolines off. Not the slide. You can probably read his body language better than I can. Yeah, low, hard push. Not real happy with that shot. They each have one on the ground now. Wow. That's going to be a two, isn't it? Yeah. If I was keeping up with the board right, 19-10 now. Travis and Cameron. Ready to pull off the upset here. Two points away from knocking off Noah squared. Trying to prove both me and Cheyenne wrong. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I picked in that one, so I get to keep my nose clean. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I do. I do have to go. Going back to to Travis and, and Cameron. Cameron again, his rookie year. We all know how good he is in the area. You've probably seen him around. Travis is just a. I'm a big fan of Travis, and I will be a fan of his if he goes into the pro division next year. Y'all keep your eyes open for that man. Another funny thing is, as much as I see Cameron, I've probably never seen him throw. Really? Yeah. Really? Until right now. All right, a four-bagger will win it for – oh, and announcer's jinx. <laughs> That's All right. real. All right, so I, I was just getting ready to ask. I got two, two pros on my right and left here. Is the announcer jinx real? Absolutely. <laughs> Cameron? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it if you believe it. We can't hear y'all, so we can't literally say blame it on y'all. Sometimes you can, though. Like, if you're on the ESPN broadcast, you can hear Trey and Jeff. I have to wear headphones while I'm up there. I'd have to say. Understandable. Here recently, I don't know if I'm just zoned out that much. Right. I don't hear them near like I did, like, previous year. I guess I should say Maybe last it's year, just experience. You've, you've managed to learn to tune it out a little bit better. Either that know, or, or, or the announcers are talking softer. <laughs> I know before... As soon as I'd go to throw, I could hear Trey Rogers' voice get so loud. <laughs> I, I will always remember, like, I think it was four year, three, four years ago in the World Championships when uh, Matthew and Brad Powers were playing Matthew Sorrells and Emery Parker on live ESPN. And Brad always told me the story. I didn't catch this at the time, but he was in his backswing one time. And in his backswing, Trey Ryder, who was only like three feet away from him, says, and Brad Powers with the biggest shot of his life. <laughs> and Brad's like, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, she's got to be in. <laughs> like, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be tough. It really does. I will let anything distract me when I'm throwing. If there's a fly or a gnat buzzing around me, my attention is gone. I don't know what I would do if I had someone narrating my game. And it's funny, it's not even like just an announcer's jink. If I'm playing and I haven't missed and someone says, wow, you need to, you haven't missed. <laughs> right. I always miss. It's like in baseball. That is my worst pet peeve. Like, I tell Noah all the time, if I'm throwing really good and then the person aside and he says that, I swear, I go straight. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like in baseball. It's like once you get to the fifth inning or so and the pitcher hasn't given up a hit, no one's allowed to say it. Right. No one is allowed to talk about it. Everybody knows what's happening, but you can't say it. Well, while we've been talking, Noah and Noah made a quite a bit of comeback. They certainly have. Maybe it's they'll now, prove us uh -oh. right. Yeah, now it's crunch time. <laughs> 1918. Last two points are hard to get. And guess what? We are over 300 viewers, so we are going to give away that six <laughs> set of bags. Fire Cornhole on the hook now to give away a six set of bags. We will figure out who that's going to be tonight. We're going to take everyone who liked and shared the post and enter them into a uh -oh. wheel spin. That will do it. Wow. What a comeback. Noah squared down big early. They pin their ears back, don't give up, and they get the win. But what a run by Cam Holland and Travis. So, so Cheyenne, you said you hadn't seen Cameron throw before, and, and you didn't know who really Travis was. What would you think of those guys? I thought they gave them a great game. Yeah. They, 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 again, they're the epitome of why it's hard to throw in this area. Yeah, I, I believe it. Yeah, there's just a, there's just a bunch of great talent here. A lot of people like Cameron, they'll always throw better around their neck of the woods than they do. Yeah, yeah I suppose that's true. Yeah, you're a little more comfortable. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for, uh, for watching that one with us, guys. We're going to take a quick break and come back. When we get back, it'll be Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger taking on the Noahs. The winner of that will move on to try to pull off a double dip on Birchfield and Rawls. 
So stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you to Cameron Belvin and Cheyenne Renner for stepping in. Really appreciate it. If you're uh, watching this, drop a comment down there and let these players know how much you enjoy when they come on the air. And we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we're back here, I believe. Yeah, this was the first live frame. We're gonna do a bag sweep there. That bag's gonna fall. Again, we've got Noah Wooten, Noah Almanza, alternatively referred to as Noah Squared or the Noahs, as well as Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger in this match. So, Cameron, you were right last time when you picked the Noahs. It didn't look good for you early. But you were right in the end. Yeah, they made a nice comeback. So, no score That's here. To tell you, don't ever give up. <laughs> That's right. They pinned their ears back, and they came storming back. So someone was asking in the comments who the number one seed was. It was indeed Birchfield and Rawls. And you were looking at the number two seed, and that is Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. No, I know I lost to these two in the rounders. So a little bit of redemption, maybe? Definitely. No, I know I were up quite a bit. And then Ryan and Justin came back. All right, so I know we still have a few matches left here tonight, but I do want to remind everyone we're going to be back at this tomorrow with singles. Most, if not all, of these same players are going to be here for that. Advanced singles will kick off at 9 a.m. And the $100 ahead high limit, high stakes singles shootout starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Drop a comment if you want to see Cameron Belvin join that. She's not entered as of right now. Do it. Do it. Enter. 
That was a nice cut shot there from Noah Almanza. What is everybody's predictions for the uh, final score of this match? I don't know. Let's see. Well, let's get let's get the people watching to say what they think the final score is going to be, and then I'm going to turn to my right and put Allison on the spot. What do you think the score is going to be, Allison? Um, God, it's so hard to even pick. I don't even know who was going to win. <laughs> Let alone the score. Well, that means it's going to be close. And, and now scoring. it's four to four, so it's even now. I'm going to go, I think Noah and Noah are going to take it. Ryan and Justin are going to get to 16. I'm going to go with Ryan and Justin, and I'm going to say 17, 21, 17. And Cameron? say Noah and Noah and Ryan and Justin get to 14. All right. So we all agree it's going to be close. Yes. Okay. I'll be very disappointed if it isn't close. All right. Let's get some, let's get some uh, predictions in the comments. Sir, are we giving away more bags if we get to 400 watchers? I'll tell you what. Yeah, we'll go with a set of all cornhole bags if we can get to 400. Let's go. <laughs> 400 like live share. viewers, why not? We'll give away why another set. Why not? Let's go. Give us a like, give us a share. Let's get everybody watching, and we'll give some bags away. Connie Altice watching. Hey, Connie. And her comment was, I think Cameron should enter. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Connie. Can you feel the peer pressure? Here's another comment. She better enter. Enter that. <coughs> All right, we got some, some predictions here. Looks like most people are going for the Noahs. Going up. Oh, my. Almost put in one of those white bags that was not his. Still got one out of it. Yep, the predictions are still rolling in. <laughs> Cameron should enter and Mike should pay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're putting Noah on that one. Noah's paying. <laughs> Noah's paying. He might be walking out of here. Well, I'm sure at this point he's walking out of here with a pretty good payday regardless, right? I would think so. I asked about the payouts earlier, and they hadn't been done yet. So, I think first takes 2500 all right, not bad. Isn't there a tradition that the winner should take the commentating crew out for dinner? If not, we should maybe start that. <laughs> I'm glad I'm on, in on this right now. So, yeah, you got to sign this agreement. If you want to be on our broadcast court, here are the rules. <laughs> oh, Noah. I don't know if he just lost focus or that bag got away from him a little bit, but uh, he bumped Ryan's bags in, sort of an unforced error there, giving him a wash. Both of these teams are playing with the Fire Vengeance bags, the slower of the two bags here today. And if you, and if you haven't heard us say it, this is a bag provided tournament, so you have to use either the Fire Vengeance or the Fire Incinerator bags that have been created specifically for this tournament, Beast of the East. So the difference is, is if you bought them in advance, you could have broken them in a little bit. If you didn't buy them in advance, you have to use some new bags, or you could have bought some literally last night and tried to break them in. There was a guy that uh, was here this morning, got bags, ran home, put them through the spin cycle, threw them in the dryer, and came back. Nice. In between rounders and the bracket starting. Whatever oh. it takes, right? <laughs> oh, beautiful shot from Noah Almanza. I will have to say the logo for this. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I thought so, too. Yeah. Beast of the East, presented to you by Fire Cornhole. Noah Almanza with that great push there takes a point. The Noahs go up 9-5. to five. 
I want to say it was almost unanimous, maybe unanimous in the comments. Oh, no, I see one now. Ryan and Justin, 2119. Yep. Whoa. Here's another one, 2116. But most people are going with the Noahs. Ooh, that bag came in really low. Ryan wanted to shoot the backside airmail, and Justin's calling for the roll. You could hit that. You could hit that, right? I definitely wouldn't tell Jason to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> he wouldn't even ask. Yeah, I was going to say, did, would he care? Jason McGuffin <laughs> over there. All right, so Ryan giving Justin first throw here. Two-point game, 9-7. Going to go over to the side. Good block. That was a good block. Oh. No Almanza just yeah, going through everything. Someone in the comments earlier asked where Noah's slippers were. I know. We asked him the same thing. And he told us, he's like, I'm never not placing the money with them on. So we were so mad he didn't wear them. But right? <laughs> at least they're guaranteed money. <laughs> <laughs> so how did the Noahs team up for this event? How'd that happen? Yeah, I was, I was saying it's not a natural, it doesn't seem like a natural fit. They don't have a whole lot in common that I know of other than their names. Do you know how that came about? Um... Because the Sacramento Open, I think Trey invited Noah out to Shamar's and to go to the Open with us. And then since then, he's like really hung around our, their, the group. He's part of the Brat Pack now? I, I yeah. was going to say it, but I was like, no, I'll <laughs> leave it be. He traveled to the Washington shootout with them from L.A. So He's in his trial period? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's hit their expectations, I guess. Okay. <laughs> there we go. But this was definitely a last-minute team-up. Yeah. Noah's actually going to a uh, cash tournament tomorrow with Jordan Power, so he's leaving at 6 in the morning. <laughs> Where's that wow. at? I guess out where they live. He's from Ohio. I don't know. Oh, so oh Noah Almanza. Noah Almanza, Okay, yeah. got ya. I was like, he I made both the tournaments work. I was like, so Noah's leaving tomorrow and you're staying? No, <laughs> Wrong, Noah. Yeah, I forget. They're both Noah. Hello? Now to shoot it. All right, Noah Almanza tells Noah Wooten to shoot it. Noah Wooten wants to talk about it a little bit first, though. The one that's hanging? Is that if that one falls, are the other ones gonna fall? <laughs> Noah just doesn't seem like he's hundred percent confident that the answer is shoot it, but Noel Monza keeps telling him to shoot it. <laughs> I'm glad Noah Wooten listened to him because if it was me on that end, he would have just it ignored it. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That might be why we don't play together. Which, that surprises me after the shootout in Atlanta last year where you guys won. Now you're like, we hate playing together. <laughs> it's a lot more emotions it was, in this It was relationship new and fun now. then. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we all predicted it was going to be close. Of that, we agreed. And, it's, and it is close as we hit the halfway point here. Noah Wooten, Noah Almanza, 11-7 to 7 lead over Ryan Smith and Justin Stranger. Nice airmail from Justin. Clean up. 
someone said Noah Wooten is wearing shoes and Ryan Smith is wearing sleeves. What is happening? <laughs> the cornhole world has been turned upside down. Justin Stranger picks up a couple points there. It's going to make it 11 to 9. Ryan and Justin came into this the number two seed. <laughs> Someone said Ethan cannot throw combats. <laughs> Ethan? <laughs> Ethan who? <laughs> no idea. That, that's all that it says. We're probably just missing some context there. That's all. Nice roll shot. Looking to see, Cameron, you don't happen to know what seed the Noahs were coming in, do you? I think they're top right, Mike. Okay. Or bottom left. Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I just scrolled all the way to the right. Now I'm going back to the left. Bottom left. We'll find them. Let's see what seed they were. They were bottom left, number five seed. So you're seeing the five and the two seed playing here, trying to get to the one seed. So the seeding has held up for the most part. And you know what? I think that tends to happen a lot more when we get six full games of rounders in. I think that's enough to really separate everyone into a decently seeded tournament. All right, we're going to head to the turn here with Justin showing a couple points. I think he's going to sit behind. Yep. Sit behind. He's going to send Noah Almanza up here. We'll see if he responds. Oh, off the back. That's going to give Justin three. All right, we're getting up there with the viewers. If everyone could just... Give us a like and share it. Let's get to 400 so we can give away some all cornhole bags. Any bags on the site, you pick them and we will have them shipped to you. Just like and share. Next match we have will feature Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls taking on the winner of this match. Alex nice. and Trey will have to be double dipped. Yes, they will. Let's see what Noah has up his sleeve here. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> We got ourselves a one-point game, 14-13. So for your prediction to be right, Cameron, Justin and Ryan can't score any more points. <laughs> it might happen. <laughs> That's true, it might. Justin going up. Wow, look at that. Beautiful airmail drag. Well, can he go over it again? Gonna up try. he goes. Oh, oh he missed. can't hit that one. Well, he gets a point, Mike's, right? We're on Mike's prediction now. 15 13. No, you were 17. Right. Yeah, I think I said 17, if I'm not mistaken. I said 16. Yeah. But you picked, but I picked the yeah, other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I picked the other way. Mm. I picked Ryan and Justin. Shout out to Mike Morton for bringing the snacks today. I was just saying <laughs> How about that? And are you guys set up or what? You haven't even seen these yet, Cameron. Welcome to the table. <laughs> We've got some some chewy nerds. We've what got some some rips, some sour rips. The and dark ones are cinnamon. The other ones are cherry. Yeah, some uh, 
cherry slices and some cinnamon slices. These big chew nerd candies, never seen them before. Definitely gonna find out where they sell them. <laughs> it's like the nerd. What are they? The ropes. No, the balls. Nerd balls? I don't know about that. What? <laughs> you have to know about those. <laughs> no. All right, Noah forfeits his last bag, takes a point. And just like we kind of expected, this is going to be a nail biter. Ooh, that could be two points there for the Noahs. Jinx. Are you not liking not playing this year, Allison? Um, so I was okay with it. And then Thursday I played at Eagle's Nest, and Matt and I got second. And then Berkeley and I did okay in the one here, and I was like, man, I guess I can still throw bags. Like, I'm Just doing all right. I think, I think so. Because I haven't really been playing at all now that we moved out to the middle of nowhere. You obviously threw well, but I'd say you drew pretty well with Berkeley yeah. and then getting Matthew out of a 37 team field. No denying that. I definitely drew great partners. You still need to hold your end. You though. absolutely do. You, plenty of people drew great partners and went down in flames. The only team we couldn't beat <laughs> was Noah. Was Noah. Yep, Noah Wooten took first place at Eagle's Nest Thursday night. Who was his partner? Sweat. Sweat Rover? Yep. Matt Morton and yours truly to the right of me anyway, Allison Baldwin taking second place. That was a tough tournament, 37 teams there. It was a tough tournament. Noah dialed up the airmail and missed it. He's not happy with himself there. All right, let's give us a like and give us a share. Let's get to 400 so we can give away some more all cornhole bags. Ryan Smith with a big airmail there. And who can forget earlier when Jason McCannon called Ryan Smith out for an airmail contest? <laughs> not Ryan, the smartest move I've ever yeah, seen. Ryan Smith said, okay, I <laughs> think I'll show you how the ACL pros do this. Ooh. Noah not happy with himself for that frame. Dougie Fresh watching. Smith and Stranger holding on to a one point lead now. Noah pulling that bag ever so slightly closer. Got one more shot. I like that bumper bag. And he's in good shape. Oh my goodness, these new <laughs> bags. Yeah, Justin was able to just board it for Isn't the wash. Playing against each other with the same bags. Make balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Neither one of these teams looking to yield anytime soon. So, Cameron, what's next for Cameron Belvin? What tournament are you in next? West Virginia? No, we're going to Surf Rodeo in Cali that week. Oh. So we'll be leaving Thursday for that one. When are you guys going to just drive across the country? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for hopefully. Oh, oh, what a sick shot from Noah Wooten. Wow, just drags everything around the hole. 
Are you playing in Surf Rodeo? No, I'm not. <laughs> you're oh, playing sorry. With? You're talking to the pro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing the Cali portion with RJ. And then the open part with Mark. Mark. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I'm not sure. Big frame there for Noah. Ryan Smith missed his push bag. Lopez. Now 1915. Noah Wooten pulls mm -hmm. off a five Mark spot. Mark Lopez. Mark Lopez. Okay. He was a PDC, but I'm pretty. I know who you're talking about. If he got pulled up to the pro. I think he made it out of the PDC yeah, I think bracket he's still PDC, in Chicago. Yeah, he just yeah. made the main field in Chicago. I think he did Utah, too. What about Spencer McKenzie's? Noah. You're playing with Noah? Mm -hmm. And women's? Uh, Bello. And, but I heard the shootout is the same as that Friday or whatever, so we might not be able to play. I'm not sure. That's just what I've heard. Got ya. Yeah, I don't know what the, the schedule is. I haven't really paid any attention yet. And that's going to do it. Noah Almanza oh, wins 50. the mini airmail war there with Justin Stranger. Puts them over the hurdle, over the hump. They so, will move on. Right in the middle of our Right. Cameron, yeah. Cameron picked 14. I picked 16. So both of us won that. And I didn't <laughs> win anything. Yeah, no, it's sorry. <laughs> oh, well. Girls rule over here. Sorry, Mike. Girls You're rule. outnumbered. I am outnumbered. <laughs> I am outnumbered. All right, well, we're going to take just a very quick break as the players are all nearby. We're going to be back in probably 60 seconds or less and bring you the finals. It's going to be Birchfield and Rawls versus Wooten and Almanza. Stick with us. We'll be back literally in about 60 seconds. All right, Cornhole fans, as promised, it was a quick break. The players are on the board. They're taking their warm-up tosses, and we're going to be ready for the finals of the Beast of the East 2022 Cornhole Tournament presented by Fire Cornhole. We're happy to be able to broadcast the action to you from the all-Cornhole broadcast court. Thank you for joining us. Players are finishing up their down and backs. Trey Birchfield, last year's ACL Pro Player of the Year. Alex Rawls, right now the current co-number one player in the world, taking on Noah Wooten and Noah Almanza for the championship. Birchfield and Rawls coming in as the number one seed. Wooten Almanza coming in as the five seed based on the doubles rounders action earlier today. Wooten and Almanza went five and one. Birchfield and Rawls six and oh. I'm joined here by Allison Baldwin and Cameron Belvin. Cameron, do you, I think you mentioned it earlier. Who did the Noahs lose to in rounders? I know they went five and one. They lost to Brian and Justin. Okay, so they got, that's right, they got the revenge. They got the revenge. And this was their loss in the winner's bracket. So they're looking to, to double up their revenge. 
So Friday at 2 o'clock is women's, is what it says here on the Spencer McKenzie site. Yeah, so, so I don't think yeah, I think will be done before that. I don't think so either. Y'all will probably be playing well. Bella will be able to play because she can. Oh, yeah, she's just going to need to find a partner. Yeah. I'm sure she won't have a problem doing that. But that's going to take a lot of the competition out of the Cheyenne to still be able to play, though. So People will have to make, Unless make they decisions. Unless whoever's qualified in doubles, if there's a female. All right, so Noah she went might. for that push there, gave up two points. That's That was the first live action of the game. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a five. Five spot. To start the game, Birchfield and Rawls right out of the gate. They only have to win one, and they got a 5 nothing lead here in game one. Are y'all going to the rest of the shootouts? Um, so we'll be in West Virginia, and I'm hoping that James will qualify in both, and we won't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> That's my hope. But um, as far as the shootouts, West Virginia is the last one that I plan on going to yeah. well we don't really do the shootouts we just do the opens and that's the last open of the year so there won't be any more combo shootout opens and we're going to go to the West Virginia shootout and that's our last planned one until Spencer's shootout I'm assuming that if James and Cheyenne don't qualify then He'll probably go down to Florida the following weekend. Her hometown. Yeah. I believe we'll you can be still register. Huh? We will be at Florida. The Florida shootout? I believe you can still register for the high roller singles tournament tomorrow. Hopefully James has signed up because I'm pretty sure yesterday was the last day to sign up for Florida. I told him to just go sign up for all of them. If you don't go, you don't go. Sign up. Yeah. All right, so Noah Almanza scored one on Birchfield the last frame to make it five to one. And then right back down at the other end, Alex Rawls with another five on Noah Wooten. Alex Rawls off to a red hot start here. 10 to one. Rawls and Birchfield throwing from the king seat. Things are looking pretty good for them right now. Ooh, he went cut shot. Bags are a little too slick for that, I think. All right, someone in, someone in the comments made made the comment that said, Buzz from Home Alone, don't miss. Took me a second to, to, to figure out to it was figure, Alex Rawls. Yeah, to figure that out. <laughs> and you probably should have seen my face, you know, when I, when I got it. Uh, yeah, I saw that too, and then I looked, and I was like, what is they talking? <laughs> oh, that's what they're talking yeah. about. Buzz from Home Alone. <laughs> It's obviously an older person because the Home Alone reference is a, is a little dated. I don't know. that It still comes on all year round, all of the time. True enough. Oh, Noah just couldn't get that bag to drop. What's y'all's thoughts on the Spencer bag policy this year? Um, wow. Whoa. That was a nasty Alex Rawls is Six on another points. planet right now. No, Wooten might take him out back afterwards and extract some revenge. My lord. I don't I don't know how I feel about it. I liked that you had to go there and everyone threw the same bag. They were all new. I think I like I think that I liked was my that. I think I liked that too. I liked it. Well, last year was my first year and we did get a second. <laughs> I this year we're like, I'm like we need to like, yeah, what, some bags. what bags are you guys going to throw? I don't even know. Because I think the cutthroats will be too slick and the combats are way too slick. So. My, uh, my partner for Spencer McKenzie's is a carpet bag thrower, so that should be fun. Noah Monza with a sick drag there, but not much fanfare because they're trailing 18 to 1. Is there a cornhole going on, Mike? 
Yeah. <laughs> the difference with Spencer's bag policy last year was that basically there was one bag that you had to use and they were Stuck everyone had game. to use the new bags yeah. so there was no advantage you couldn't break them in ahead of time i think i i wouldn't be so not happy with the bag policy if that's what it was you can buy them here yeah and use whichever oh. bags you want but they all have to be new big big airmail there from Noah wooten so am i remembering that wrong though was there only uh or were you able to buy bags in advance last year? No. You could for Spencer's, but you, you could throw them. But you couldn't throw them at the tournament? Remember, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could buy the bags, yeah, but you weren't allowed. You could buy practice. them and throw them because it was the new bag. That was right when the 2.0s were coming out. But you had to out. use the bags on the boards yes. when yeah. you got got yeah. to your board, right? I think they said, like, practice bags. And that did, that did seem to even yeah. the playing field a little they bit. They did say practice bags on them, so you couldn't play with them in the tournament. No one will be able to match the wind conditions at Spencer's, though. Oh, my though. gosh. Yeah, you can barely walk in that wind, less, much less throw bags. Well, Trey Birchfield's basically shooting for the win here. And that'll be... That's going to do it. Yep. Don't think there's any miracle that can be answered here for Noah Almanza. They, they walked away pretty <laughs> quickly and easily with that win. They did. They We said how dominant they've been. They took down number one and number two in the Pro Skills Challenge Friday night. They no, take down doubles. To, I was trying to get me another drink, saying it was going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> you still haven't finished your first one. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, th thanks for thanks. Thanks for Thrank tuning yeah. in. We appreciate you watching the Beast of the East tournament here, presented by Fire Cornhole. We here at the All Cornhole Broadcast Court will be back at it again tomorrow. The ad advanced single starts at 9. We should be starting to bring you some coverage sometime, I would say, around 9.30 or so. 9.30, 10, you know. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> the, the high limit singles, $100 a head shootout in singles will begin at 1 p.m. Eastern time and tomorrow. And we will be sharp starting on that. Absolutely. So thank <laughs> you, Cameron, for sitting in here for the last yeah, few minutes. Yeah, we appreciate you. Absolutely. And Allison and myself and Cameron are going to be out until tomorrow. Thanks for watching.